can hear me. I know you can hear me. Can you see me? Yes, sir, we can. Yes, I can see you. Welcome. I'd like to welcome everyone out to our first, uh, hopefully many. Yes. So as we always do, we'll start out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, this morning for allowing us to bring forth your, your voice, Father, and everything that is of you, Father. Father, we thank you for everyone that is here, Father. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share what you have given us, Father, for, for us to be able to impact lives, Father. Father, we thank you ever so much again for waking us up, Father, with this purpose, Father, that we need to share and give it to everyone, Father, that we are so zealous, Father, that we need to get it out to others, Father, and understand that we just need to be oh so grateful and thankful for everything that you're able to do, Father, for everything that you're able to bless us with, Father. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that you continue to pour on us, Father, that are in this conversation, Father, that are on this, 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 this session, Father, that we are able to, to pour on everyone, Father, that is in here, Father, that they are able to take something from it, Father, and that they are, they are able to use it to impact their lives, Father. Father, we ask that, that you use us, Father, to impact other people's lives, Father, that, that you use us, Father, to bring forth your teachings, Father, your glory, everything that is of you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we ask that anything that is not like you and anything that is not of you, Father, that you remove it from us, Father, and that it not come back, Father. We thank you right now, Father, for what you're doing in our lives, Father. Again, Father, we ask that this session, these sessions, Father, that it impact lives, Father, that when they come in or how they come in, Father, that they don't leave out the same way, Father. Father, we thank you right now, Father, for you as in us, for using us how you want to see fit, Father, for using us for your purpose, Father, for your glory, Father, for your honor, Father. We thank you right now, Father. And again, Father, for those that are that, that leave this conference, Father, again, we ask again that they do not leave the same way that they came in, Father, that they have a renewal, Father, that they have a greater sense, Father, of your purpose, not only for their lives, Father, but for everything that that you that is, encompasses you, Father. Father, we thank you right now, Father. Father, we continue to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise that is due to you, Father. We thank you right now, Father, in your majesty's name, your magical, majestic, name we 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 give you honor glory and praise father in jesus name amen amen and amen thank you thank y'all for joining this meeting this morning i thank you god for being a miraculous god i don't know about magical but i thank you for being miraculous father i thank you i bless you and we give you glory and honor thank y'all for joining us this morning as we walk into the thrive conference as we do this to build up the kingdom and to help you thrive in your single state in in the current state that you're in in your singleness um so we were going by the scripture ephesians 4 verse 16 and ephesians 4 22 through 24 in apostle burley yes ma'am you want me to go ahead and begin yes please we're gonna go ahead and keep moving keep rolling all right so um we're gonna do ephesians chapter 4 I believe it's verse 16 and then 22 through 24. Is that correct, yes. Prophet? Yes, Apostle. All right. It says, verse 16, it says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Um, so before I go to the other two scriptures I wanted to uh, start here because one thing that I think as us as a bottom as a body of believers we one first have to understand our uniqueness we're all unique in God we all do different things God gives us all different talents and gifts we all have some of us have similar offices 
offices, but we have different measures. We have different purposes. God leads us to a separate, a separate demographic of people. But one thing we have to understand is even in the midst of that, because we are in God, and I'm not talking about in God and talking about one another. I'm not talking about in God and competing with another, one another. I'm talking about we are in God. So that means that no matter what you or I do with myself or Apostle Simona does, myself or Pastor or Prophet Hines does, myself or Apostle Hall does, that means nothing that we do means that we're separate because we can't do this thing without one another. And the only way that we can do that thing is in love because if I don't love you, how can I work with you? Mm -hmm. If I don't love you, how can I work with you? If I have enmity with you or if I have dissension with you for whatever the reason, and I say whatever the reason, because we know a lot of things play, put into play, feelings get put into play, uh, other people's experiences mm -hmm. with other people, meaning um, they may have had a situation with somebody. So because they had a situation with somebody, they put it on you. And now you don't understand why you don't like the person because they put you in a situation that you had nothing to do with. And now you feel uh, dis disgruntled. You feel dissatisfied. You feel disloving. You feel bitter with this person when you know you didn't have that problem before. And it pre all prevents us from working together. And we understand that if we can't work together, we can't do what the script says about working neatly fitted together. Why? Because we have an issue. So now that we have an issue, I can't work with you and you can't work with me. Or for some of us, I can't work with you because I know you got an issue with me and your nasty attitude is affecting me. So I would just rather uh, remain separate because if I don't and I allow your nasty attitude to affect me, I can no longer love you. So some of us move into the place where we love for it from a distance just because of that aspect, because I would rather be separate from you and to love you than be around you. And you're acting some type of way. You're treating me terrible. terrible. You're treating me uh, like I'm lower than you. You're treating me as, as, as if I don't. I'm worth nothing. You don't. Um, this is a big one that I've even faced myself. You treat me as if compared to everybody else, I mean nothing. Come on here. You treat me that my salvation doesn't matter to somebody else's salvation. Come on now. You make me feel as though what I'm going through is less important than what you're going through or what somebody else is going through. So because of that, you know, um, I don't I don't want to deal with you. So I can love you from afar because there's nothing getting in between me and my heart if I don't allow you to affect me. Come on here. We're, we're, we're being real and transparent. If I don't allow you to affect my heart, if I don't allow you to affect my mind, because the Bible says, so a man think of it, so is he. So if I allow you to get in my heart to affect my mind, that means I have already committed a sin, which is to hate you because I allowed you to affect my mindset. See, sometimes it's not always about, um, it's not always really about how what people say, but it's their tone. It's about how you feel when you walk into the room. It's about, and, and don't get me wrong, and I have to add this to it. Sometimes because we are clothed in human nature, we're clothed in sin, we have to understand that feelings are just that. Feelings depict an image based off of your perception. Could it be true? Yes, it could be very true. However, it could also be wrong because it's only grafted and yielded to what, how you see things. So versus that, I need truth in my life so that I can continue on loving you. So I just say that yeah, as, a, um, as a body, as a body of believers, we have to work to loving one another and coming to people with pure intentions. I feel that I feel and I often see it a lot. And I feel that we sometimes come to each other in, in the body of Christ with the you do this, I do that mentality. And when we do that, we can't work together because the moment that I can't show up, the moment I can't support, the moment I can't sew, the moment I'm in the hospital, the moment the hell is breaking loose in my life. 
the moment that I can't pray for you because I'm trying to pray somebody else through, that's the moment that you leave me. And all this goes together about working neatly fitted together. Because when you have a handout mentality, unless that hand is out, you will never help. You will never help. But when we work neatly fitted together, I can support what you're doing. You can support what my, I'm doing. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing, but it has to do with building the kingdom of God. The word says, uh, uh, with every joint supply of soul, that means each of us, each of us, no matter how big, how small, we all have something to supply to the kingdom of God. You all have something to give to somebody, no matter how small, no matter how disqualified you feel, no matter how hurt you've been through things, no matter uh, uh the weight you've been through, no matter how full of sin you are, everybody has a purpose that can be used to supply the kingdom of God. And, it, uh, and when we do it in love, when we work together, we see it increases. Now, here's the problem in the body of Christ and sometimes even in the world, when you don't see them moving in love and supply of we no longer see the edification. We no longer see the building. That's why we have so many places, businesses, churches, communities. That's why we have so many places that they have moved past the place of um, flowing. They have moved, moved past the place of growing because somewhere the neatly fitted, the jointly fitted is missing. Somewhere there's a broken bone. Somewhere there's a broken femur. Somewhere there's a missing hand. Somewhere there is a connection that is no longer there that prevents the flow from coming together and actually moving and producing. And we as a people have to have enough mind of God to be able to identify where's the flow messed up. And we can only do that if we're not so concerned about us. Uh oh. We can only do that if we're not so, so concerned about what we got going on. Us showing up, us being us being edified, not God being edified, but us being edified, us being in a place where we can be exalted, us being in a place where we can prove to people that we have a ministry or we can prove to people that we're right, us being exalted to the point where um, we're just doing where it becomes a popularity or a celebrity status. We have to check these things. And oftentimes they go overlooked. And by the time we turn around, we're in the we're in the place of hate because we've been broken for so long. The body has been out with without constant uh, blood supply because we talked about neatly fitted together. We've been so uh, so long without blood supply that it's become a, 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 a limb. For those of you all who knows people who are diabetic, when blood or blood flow uh does not go to a certain limb, it begins to get gangrene. And what gangrene is, the body begins to eat away at itself. Come on here. The body begins to eat away at itself. And eventually what they have to do, they have to do surgery. We have to remove this part so that we can get the blood flowing again so that it doesn't kill the whole body. I'm going to say that again. We have to go and do surgery to remove the dead tissue. We have to go and do surgery to move the dead thing that has been dead so that the rest of us can flow and move in God the way that he designed it to be. Okay, so then uh, we go to Ephesians chapter four, verse 23 through 24. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye be you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now I'm gonna try not to uh, step too hard because this is a singles conference, and I know we have the question to answer. So I'm gonna put this. What that means is some of the things we talk about. We we hear the church cliche. We can't put old wine skin. And new, a new wine and old wine skin. Well, some of us have to come to the place where what we were doing, we have to kill all of that. We have to kill all of that. Why? Because sometimes that old person is, is, is connected to your old desires. And we feel that, we feel that, oh, well, if we just keep this part 
If we just keep this part, um, it ain't going to affect it. But we have to realize there is a tie. Come on now, because the old man is tied to some things. So until you get rid of that old man, you're tied. You're, you're still tied. So let's let's go a little further. So what does that mean? That means if you are a person, because we're talking about singleness, uh, if you are a person that uh, has been a person of sleeping around, if you are a person that has been in a per that that uh, dates people that don't commit, you know that was your old life. If you never deal with that. If you never give up that old mindset, then what you're going to do is when you get into a new relationship, when you get into a new friendship, when you start seeking your wife, when you start seeking your husband, all you're going to do is bring the thought process of the old man because you're saying, oh, well, I can do this. And then that mindset, well, if you can do this, you can also do this. Remember when, when you used to do that and it slowly begins to take you back to where you were, you start going to the place where you find yourself, you tell yourself, I'm not going to do that. But now you find yourself sleeping in the bed with the old you. You find yourself going back to cussing people out. Well, it's just, it's just, it's just a little cuss word. Come on now. It's just, it's just, the, it's just a little anger. And by the time you realize that you then reverted and killed your entire process, because you didn't kill the old man. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the killing, the killing of the old man requires discipline. Sometimes it's not always lip service. Sometimes it's not always just deliverance, but sometimes you have to make a conscious decision to not only tame your tongue, but you need to tame your mind. Come on now, you need to tame your eye gates. You need to tame what's going on in your ear. You need to tame uh, that if you know, if you know you are a person that you like the taste of alcohol, you need to take yourself to a place uh, uh, and let, let, let me go a little further. You like the taste of alcohol because alcohol makes you feel good, but you also, alcohol makes you do other things. Our alcohol makes you drink. Alcohol makes you vulnerable to feeling lonely, which in turn feeds the spirit of rejection that causes you now to go out and look in that black book. Come on now. You go and look, you go and pull on old faithful. Come on now. You go, you go and talk to that person that you know that you're not supposed to talk to uh, uh, outside of your spouse. You go and talk to that person that you know that you, uh, that you broke away with, but you know in your mind, hello somebody, you know in your mind that they are no good for you, but because this one drink led you back down the road of old, you now no longer have no control because you weren't disciplined in your movements. You weren't disciplined in your walking. You weren't disciplined in your thinking to say, okay, I need to do this. Oh, instead of, ha instead of having the mindset of, oh, a little bit ain't going to hurt. No, I'm good. Some years ago, uh, my youth pastor told me this was this was the most prophetic and profound thing that he could say to me. He said, a little's not that bad, right? I said, well, that's what they say. He said, if I cook you some brownies, would you eat it? I said, yes. He said, if I cook you some brownies and put feces in it, only a little bit, would you eat it? I said, no, what do you think I'm crazy? He said, why? It's only a little. And that's how we look at some things. It's only a little. It's not going. It's 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 not going to hurt nothing. It's not going to hurt nobody if I have a little conversation. It's not. It's not. It's not going to hurt anybody if I hang around those friends that don't do nothing. Because let let let's go here because sometimes that old man is the company you keep. Because the company you keep ain't going nowhere, so you can't go nowhere. Why are you not progressing in your singleness? Why does it feel like you're stuck unless you have somebody on your arm? Why does it feel like you're stuck unless you have somebody comforting you? Why do you feel like you're stuck unless you have somebody uh, whispering in your ears and giving you pillow talk? Why do you feel like you're not progressing unless you have somebody that is dependent on you? Come on here. We're talking about singleness because a lot of us have a fixer up spirit. Right. And because that need, it has nothing to do about them not being able to take care of that themselves. But it's the fact that they need you. It's the fact that they're getting something from you and making you feel accepted, making you feel needed. But in, 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 in sight, you're taking care of them. Come on here. And what you begin to do it, like I said, it's tied to the old man. 
So until you get rid of those friends that's not going nowhere, come on here. Until you get around some people that's going where you're going, and for our Christians, stop saying, oh, and I'm not saying you can't have non-believer friends, but sometimes some of us, we got more friends that are out the church than in the church. And I'm going to go a little further. Some of us got people in the church, but not in God. And you know they're not in God. But we're talking about being delivered and leaving the old man so that you can progress. But if you know they're not in God, and you know, you know they're not in God, and you know they're feeding your flesh, you know they're feeding your mind, that you know they feeding, you know they feeding your depression. We're talking about singleness. You know they're feeding your depression. The depression that causes people to use you. Come on now. Still talking about singleness. Because these things in singleness that, that we deal with, people then turn around and say, well, if I just had a wife, I wouldn't have to deal with this. If I just had a husband, I wouldn't have to deal with this. But then when you get the husband because you never dealt with it and the old man is still present, when you get over, when God moves you into a relationship, we're not talking about marriage, but when he moves in, that old man going to wake up like Lazarus and say, hello. And then people are going to realize you're not the person that they started dating. You're not the person that they thought you was. Why? Because you didn't mold the old man. You didn't take care of the old man. You didn't renew your mind because sometimes it takes a renewed mind. Why does it take a renewed mind? The Bible says to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sometimes you have to transform your mind so you can transform you. You have to transform your mind and sometimes transforming your mind, meaning you need, if you don't believe it, you write it out. You write it out and you say it every, you you say it and you recite recite those things. Even though your mind say one thing, you recite those things. Why? Because when you transform your mind, you transform what comes to you. Come on here. If you if you keep saying, um, I'm not gonna find nobody or everybody's like this, then we're 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 not going to, we're not going to be able to achieve anything. If you always say, oh, I'm not going to find nobody because everybody out here is a dog, all females are dogs, all men's are dogs. Let me tell you what the problem of that is. When you when you get into the mindset, we're talking about singleness still. When you talk about all men are dogs, all women are dogs, what does that do? That moves you in the vein of settlement. Come on here. And when you settle, that means you begin to take uh, uh, you begin to take uh, 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 pieces of other people's spirit and now what was their baggage becomes your baggage. So now your old man has married their old man and now y'all old man is together coming with a whole army and now everybody has baggage because you got weight from that person, you got weight from you and now you're carrying it and now you wonder why you can't get out. Because you didn't renew your mind. You didn't change your thinking. You have to speak those things that you want to see. You have to speak. And, and a lot of times, and a lot of times, um, when you speak these things, you have to understand that sometimes the enemy will cause your mind to cause you to fail what you're seeing. Why does the enemy cause you to fail with your seeing? Because if you don't believe it, the enemy knows that it won't manifest. The enemy knows that it won't come because when it does manifest, because you don't believe it, you're going to miss it. Just like a job. If they say you qualify, but you believe you're not qualified, you're never going to apply for it, so you're never going to get it. That went over some of y'all heads. You ne you're never going to move forward. So you have to remove your mind. Renewing your mind is not just something. I know we talk about daily, but sometimes it's a hourly thing. Sometimes it's a minutely thing. Sometimes it's a second thing. Why? Because just that quick a thought just came in my mind. Just that quick, I became desperate. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Just that, just that, that, just that quick, I became lonely and I wanted to be touched. Just that quick, I wanted somebody to tell me that they love me. So because I want somebody to tell me I, that they love me, what do I have to recognize? I have to rec recognize that there's an emptiness where I feel unloved. So you have to renew your mind to understand why does your mind tell you that you're not loved? 
Why does your mind tell you that you're not appreciated? Why does your mind tell you that you're not good enough? Come on here. Why does your mind tell you that this is all you're ever going to get? Why does your mind tell you that single is going to be your, your, your portion if you don't settle? But you also understand if you settle, then you're going to be in rebellion to God because you know, let me pause there because that's going to go, that's going to go into the discussion. Let me pause, let me pause right there. That's going to go into the discussion. So I just uh, want to say we have to do that. And it says that we have to be in righteousness and true holiness. Holiness, and I know we talk about holiness in the black church, every church, but more so in the black church. You know what the one thing they didn't explain to holiness? Yes, holiness is for God, but holiness is for you. Because the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. But the part that got me was taste and see. And this is sometimes that we that I talked about when I was in college. And I had come to the revelation. If we would have never tasted and seen, we wouldn't be dealing with half the stuff that we're dealing with now. But we have allowed the world, we have allowed, allowed media, we have allowed the the, uh, uh, the people, we have allowed the music videos, we have allowed the celebrities in our singleness to make us feel that we're missing out. I want to tell some of you on this Zoom right now that you are not missing anything out there. If it's for you, it's going to be for you. You're going to gain it. You're going to get it. And it's going to be all well. And it's going to be everything that God has designed for you. Yes, when you, you do find a person, it may be some bumps. Yes, in your singleness, when you go through things, you get tired. However, what God has for you, it has. He, uh, uh, good things come to those who wait. So you, and, and the Bible says, wait upon the Lord and he shall renew your strength. You need strength because if you don't have strength, when you go through in your singleness, you will fall. And this is not saying necessarily to push you to somebody, but in your singleness, you will fall because iniquity and sin and what people put on you begins to manifest in your eye and ear gate. And now you desire it and can't figure out why. You can't figure out why. Um, I'm going to give a perfect example and I'm going to pass it back over. Um, before, it used to be illegal to have certain items in the store for adults. Now, and I think I just seen this the other night, it's on commercials. It's sold in Walmart. Your kids can see it in the CVS. You can go on uh, Amazon and buy it. And it's so out there that it begins to mold people into thinking that this is right. But what I have come to learn is it's trying to teach you how to artificially become satisfied instead of being what? neatly fitted together how does that um, how does that go to our kingdom life that goes to our kingdom life because things are trying to teach us that we don't need one another things are trying to teach us that while we're single it's you 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 either going to be alone or you're going to be with somebody there is no middle ground it's to teach you that this is all that you're ever going to get you have to find something that artificially pleases you and why i say artificially because it only lasts for the moment come on now it only lasts for the moment you calling such people it only lasts for the moment you have a certain phone calls it only lasts for a moment you out partying come on it only lasts for a moment you going and talking to somebody knowing they're not good for you or knowing that you met them and they in prison, but because they make you feel good, it only lasts for a moment because it's artificial. It's not real. But that's what we've been fine tuned in singleness because we've made it. OK. OK. All right, Prophet Himes, I'm going to turn it back over to you. The fact that he just cut it short like that because he was going to go somewhere. He was trying to reel it back in, Apostle Simona. And then we're going to go back and do the introductions and tell y'all what Thrive is after we let Apostle Simona uh, chime in on her portion of these, these scriptures. He hit on every portion. I'm just like, mm. so um, I'm going to start with Ephesians 4 and 16. 
um, for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And so the spirit of the Lord was talking to me last night. Um, therefore, those who are in him are considered a new creature. And a lot of times we want to be uh, joined fitly together as gifts, but we have to do what self-identity first. And a lot of times we don't want to self-identify who we are. We don't want to go through the process of who we are. We look at other people and determine who we are from that point. And that's what causes the main confusion. We don't build foundation on the correct way. So self-identity in order to understand your role, your part of the body, surrendering who you used to be. Hello. Surrender who you used to be to obtain the new thing. So a lot of times we go by emotions and we don't identify who we are. We don't identify what our role, um, what our role is. And a lot of times, like even now, there's confusion that is starting and it's causing an influence, right? But we have to know who we are in Christ. Because if we don't know who we are in Christ, we'll be pulled every which way trying to be somebody else instead of who God has called us to be, right? And it causes a separation of the body, as Apostle uh, Monty was saying. If I, if I don't know who I am, how can I properly join with you? How can I properly say that I'm a, I'm a part of something, but I don't know who I am? Right. And so now it's our job as leaders, right, that say we know who we are. It's our job to help those who don't know who they are to have self identification, because if not, they'll be swayed any type of way, be pulled any type of way and uh, end up hurting their own feelings because we allow sometimes emotions to override who we are and who God has called us to be. Um, surrendering for servanthood. Right. A lot of times we want to say, uh, you know, God, I'm all for it, but we don't want to really surrender everything that's in us. We really don't want to surrender the old man to obtain the new thing that God has want us to do. He's calling us to do something, but we don't want to surrender those certain things. Even as a single person, I can speak on that because I've been single. Right. Even as a single person, uh, I don't I don't want to surrender the club, God. Well, I don't I don't want to surrender the boo. I don't want to surrender these things. And the father said, well, how can you serve me? You can't have two masters, right? We, we can't have two masters. So we surrender that we may be able to be servants, right? So he's calling us to be jointly fit together. But are you a servant? Are we truly servants? We have to evaluate ourselves each day to say, father, am I serving the way that I should serve? Um. I put on here um, this morning, um, well, last night, the spirit of the Lord was talking to me about being busy body, right? Um, and as a single person, there were times where I, I'm just being transparent. There were times where I would overdo things to overcompensate, to keep myself busy so I wouldn't sin. Hello, right? But when we become busy body, that, that means we are using God as a rebound and not as a relationship, right? So he wants us to build relationship with him that we may have a balance. A lot of us saying that we want to be married, um, but we really didn't build a relationship with God first to self-identify who we are, what we require, what we don't require, right? We become busybody. So we have services, we'll have all these things to stay busy, but God said, you're using me as a rebound instead of building relationship with me and you don't spend time with me, right? And so he's calling for, for the busybodies to identify right? Their relationship in him. Is, is, uh, is it easy being single? No, it's not, right? It's not easy. Let's just be transparent. It's not easy. It's a process, right? But as you build your relationship with the father, you'll find your time is consumed in him. You'll find your time is consumed in business. You'll find that your time is consumed in helping things to build your legacy, right? But if we lose that focus, then let me do this service so I ain't got to call such and such. Because if I sit here too long, then I'm going to do this. If I sit here too long, then I'm going to do this. We cannot use the Lord as a rebound and call it God, right? And so we've come, some have become busybodies. It's not that they're not doing anything for God, but they're not doing it in God. It's a big difference. And so God, as a single person, the Lord wants you to know, listen, um, build your relationship with me so when the time does come, you know how to have a relationship with your spouse, right? Some of us have cut ourselves short where we, we're still going through the process. Marriage is not easy. No, it's not. But at the same time with God, it is. Hello, it's, it's better than you trying to figure who you are, trying to figure out who they are because you didn't spend time with God to identify and have discernment and awareness of what's going on. Um, release the past and what you think you know 
and surrender habits. Release the past, release what you think you know, and surrender habits. Be willing to fully submit to understand your life does not belong to you. Your life at this time as a single person, it does not belong to you. Not if you surrendered it to Christ, it doesn't belong to you, right? And so some things, um, as Apostle Monty was saying, some things we try to carry with us. Well, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep this black book. Some of us got Google contacts that are still saving their phone. You still got Google contacts. You don't You don't have to have the black book. You got the Google contact back up, right? And so what, what will happen is, or somebody will message you in the messenger. You really, you didn't delete them. You didn't block them. You feel like, you know, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to go back to that. So it doesn't matter, right? And so you're finding your Google contacts, your contacts are still there. You didn't even clean out your address book or anything because you, you want to have a backup plan. If I feel lonely, let's be honest, some of the preachers, right? I don't know how many preachers on here that are single, right? But even after you preach, there's a high. Hello? Hello? We, we don't want to talk about that. Uh oh, okay. There's a high of hormones. There's a high of things that need to be balanced, right? And we don't take the time. Some of us don't take the time. We go, I got to get this off of me. I got to get this off of me. Instead of praying to God and asking him to calm your spirit down, right? And that's how leaders become whores. Okay. You don't, okay. I'm, I'm too raw. Listen, that's how leaders become whores. Because they don't know how to identify their relationship in Christ. God can use anybody. Can I tell you that? Right? We all have gifts. Right? We all have gifts. But it's the anointing that makes the difference. So it's a lot that are riding around here operating on pulpits. Right? But they're operating in gifts, not the anointing. So that's why it's easy for them to go sleep around. Right? It's not that they sleep with one person. Hello. They sleep with multiple people wherever they go because they have to get that feeling, that hormone off of them instead of channeling God saying, listen, I need you to help me, right? We say we have a relationship, right? But relationship is a decision. Sin is a decision, right? So I'm going to say something. Don't allow, because you're saying, Apostle, I've made mistakes, right? You, you, you may be telling the panel, I've made mistakes, I've done something, right? But don't use that to co-sign to continue to sin. You slept with somebody, okay, right? But it's a decision to keep on sinning. Hello. It's a decision to keep on sinning. So, no, we, we are not perfect, but we are being perfected. Come on, through Jesus Christ. We are being perfected. Those things are being perfected that's concerning. Come on. But if you mess up, the thing is we repent to change and not to repeat. Some of us feel like we don't repent, then it's okay, right? And so we say, you know, I did this. I might as well keep going. <laughs> Baby, hey, I was on this road. This moment right here was bomb. Let me go back and um finish up what I started, right? And so you, you do that one sin and then you say, you know, let me go ahead and keep going, right? This is where grace has to and mercy have to extra step in, <laughs> have to come in full force because of a decision. Right. Because of the heart. My God, the heart wants what the heart wants. But guess what? If, if the Holy Spirit is seated at your heart, then there's a decision and conviction that occurs. Right. Everybody level is different. Let's just be honest, because some people say, oh, you act like you're holier than thou. You act so deep. This and this and this and that. It doesn't matter what anybody says about you. Here we go with self-identification. It doesn't matter what somebody else says about you. It's what you answer to. And if you're answering to God, then it doesn't even matter what somebody is saying but it's how you're walking. And so we have to, even as a single person and married person, we have to learn how to walk it out. Hello. We have to learn how to stand on what God has called us and what he has called us to. Because if we lose that purpose and that self-identification, then we become anything to anybody. <laughs> and then we have soul ties. Hello. Hello. We go into marriages with soul ties. Hello. We, we walk around single, but we still got Tim, Jane, Paul, Tyrone, Jane, Betty Boo, we got all these people walking around with us. I'm single. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the Lord to, to do these things. I'm, wait, mm -mm, I'm waiting on God. You waiting on God, but we see your personality of Tim. Come on, we see your personality of Jane. Well, I thought they wasn't talking about child. They look, they, they look like they still together. Hello, it's still connected. So a lot of times we have to what? Remove those soul ties denounce and renounce, come on, those things that have been inside of us, we don't want to talk about that. 
You wonder why you're angry. You didn't have no angry spirit before, but because you slept with that person, hello, you slept with that person, you, you established that foundation. You established those things inside of you. And then your thought process changed. You was good last week. I just got to get this off of me. I just got, it ain't, it ain't going to be but, but one night, Lord. And I promise I'm not going to do it no more. That one night got you discombobulated, right? And if you are fitly and joined and neatly together, right? Covered, right? A covered in accountability and things. We don't want to have, now I'm, I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody's ministries, anything like that. But what I'm saying is you should have a leader that you can be accountable to that will be able to tell you the truth and be able to reel you in when they see something wrong, right? And as a leader, my experience is when somebody has done something wrong, guess what they do? Give space. They don't dip out. <laughs> they hide because they know they've done something wrong. Hello. They know they've done something wrong. Come on, Adam, Eve. They know they've done something wrong, yet they don't want to be identified. They don't want to identify the issue. They don't want to be healed because guess what? They want to send some more. And then when they get finished sinning, then they won't come back, right? But this is a time that we have to confront those things, right? That we may be jointly and knitted, fitted together. Because if not, it'll be like a sore thumb. We, If we're doing team and you've been doing what you want to do and you come and say, you know, I'm ready to do work, but but you have a spot, not, not just a spot. You have a wrinkle so thick that it's identified because of veering far off. Right. And so we don't want to be knitly together because we don't want to be identified far off. <laughs> if I'm not fitted with you, then then you can't help me. If I'm not fitted with you, then you can't make me accountable. And so if I keep my space and my distance, you don't see me. Right. But we come on now. We see. Come on. Even even if I do something, guess, guess what my spiritual mind does? Stop. <laughs> Hello. Stop. I'd be like, yes, man. I'm not about to be combative, right? Sometimes we are so combative with God as single people. Come on, I'm just, I'm listen. I've only been married three years. Sometimes we are so combative with God, we don't even realize we're combative with the Lord. Hello, hello. He'll say, don't do that. I ain't even did nothing. Well, I can't do this one more time. I can't even talk to him. I just want conversation, but you know that conversation to have you looking at porn. You, you know that conversation will have you buying or ordering a toy from Amazon. Hello. Uh-oh. Conversation. You don't have to have the physical body. Come on. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm sorry. You don't have to have the physical uh, body to please the flesh for that moment. Right? And sometimes we, we, we try to understand, well, God, why my promise is not coming to pass? Where's my husband? Your husband is that toy. Where's my wife? Your wife is, is that movie and that toy. And so we delay our own process because we don't want to submit all things. But the father said it's time to surrender, right? So it's it's it becomes false servanthood. Uh-oh. It, it becomes a false surrenderance when you're really not surrendering those things. And I'm not saying the process is easy. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is build your relationship with the Lord that those things may fall off. Right. And sometimes there's a thorn in the flesh. Right. There's a there's a thorn in the flesh, God, that I that I need you to deal with. Right. The very thing you telling me not to do is the very thing that I'm doing. And I need you to handle that. But guess what? That comes with a transparent and honest. Oh, he see me. Right. But he doesn't hear your voice. You're not confessing nothing to him. Hello. You have to confess those things so they can be dealt with. As long as I don't talk about it, right? You feel like it's okay, but it's 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 just not. It's a process because I'm I'm just gonna be honest with you. If you don't fix it now, right? When you get into a marriage, it's gonna cause confusion. Hello, it's gonna cause so much confusion because you got all these things that you got your spouse up against. All these things you got the person that you're dating. You got all these things that they got to try to deal with and decipher and try to see well what's really them because she just said such and such such but then today she kind of threw out there that she liked this but she just said she don't like that and you know in conversations you'll find things take your time and have conversations hello let me stop there take your time and have conversations you ever had a conversation with somebody and one minute they said something and then the next five minutes they say something else i could be on the phone 
at, at a supervisor at work, they'll, they'll start off the conversation by saying they can make a payment on this date, but then they say, I only got this amount today. Then they, they backtrack and then they say, oh, I don't have nothing today, but you just say you had something today, right? So as you have conversations, lies can be revealed. Hello. You can save yourself a lot of times when you have full conversations. It's more to it than just the face and the look. It's more to it than just the face and the look. And so we have to understand in order to become, because thriving is flourishing, to shoot up, to grow, to be vigorously doing something, right? To, uh, to be prospering, right? The I-N-G. That means it's an ongoing process. Whether you're married or single, it's an ongoing process to thrive. You should want to be uh, become better even after this session. You should want to become, right? So after this, even this is a level up. Come on. Come on, tell your neighbor I'm leveling up. Because it's identifying, right? You have identified it may be some things that needs to be enlightened in you that you did not know former or can add to what you already know, right? To go up. So the purpose of all this is for you to go up even after this, that you may identify and create boundaries, right? Because everything can attach to the body. <laughs> everything cannot attach to the body, right? I, I can't wear certain things because I may be allergic to it, right? And so I can't, I have to think about more than just myself when it comes to Genesis, when it comes to becoming her, when it comes to abundant life, I have to think about more than myself because I, I can't afford to infect the body. I can't afford to affect what I say I'm connected to. And it's just that serious, whether you single or married, right? Because you have unfaithful married people, right? But again, if, if you had that mindset that was fixed beforehand, right? Then it wouldn't have been an issue in the marriage if you have a relationship with God and you're in alignment. So that's what we want to be. We want to be in alignment with Christ, that we may be in alignment with our lives. Because if we skip this process, guess what? We cheat ourselves. My God. If we skip the process, we skip the promises of God. And then we're ready to identify and tell somebody that they're lying. Oh, you, you said this was going to happen. And Father said, no, you got out of alignment. So I had to give it to sister so-and-so. I gave it to apostle so-and-so because when I, when I gave the word, you weren't in place, but I was there. No, you can be in place and out of posture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, we, we have a lot of, come on, we, we, we part of the body, but you infected. We, you're not in posture. So it doesn't matter if you're single or married, you need to learn how to be in posture. And that means we have to seek the Lord. We can't just use God when we want to stay busy. That's just like being in a marriage, but not having a relationship. <laughs> it make it make sense. It's, it, it, it can't be the two. So you build your relationship with God. I don't want to just talk about him. I don't want to just have services and use people to do what I want them to do and call it God. Everything ain't God. You just use God's name. That's called rebounding. To identify, to keep you occupied while you're single. It's two different things, y'all. It's two different things. And the Lord said, I'm concerned about my people. So we have to understand, no, no. Build your relationship with God and stop using him. Come on. Build your relationship with God and stop using him. He's not somebody we can just put up and put down when we want to and then call it God. That's just like having a toy. Hmm? A cover up. He's my covering, but he's not my cover up. It's a different thing, right? Wording is everything, right? And a lot of times as leaders who want to uh, cover up, they use God as a cover up. And the spirit of the Lord said, we become busy bodies and he's not your rebound. So we have to identify those things. Listen, 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 listen. We all play a part. We have to assume this position. We have to assume the position, assume the posture, right? He's not going to identify anything that doesn't need to be identified, right? He's not going to waste his time revealing things and saying things for us to be in the same position over and over again. He's, he's not that type of God. He's, he's not that type of father. 
Makarosa. He's not that type of God that he's not concerned about your change. Hello, hello. You, you, you over here hovering about the sin and the Lord said, I'm concerned about your change, right? And so it's a decision and a process and acknowledgement, not only acknowledge it, right? But repent, right? We all need to have a spirit of repentance. And like Apostle Monty said, sometimes and not just, you know, renew my mind daily, right? Because your mind can't be renewed if you're not repenting. Here we go with the R's. If you're not repenting and acknowledging what needs to be addressed, how are you renewing your mind? Somebody answer that for me. If we're skipping the process, how are, are we really transforming our mind? Are we really renewing our mindset? Are, are we? Mm -mm. No. Well, if I don't talk about it, I can still do it. No. No. Some of us got um, grace and mercy and overload. Right? And we disappoint. That's just like a parent. We, we you know, sometimes children constantly 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 doing something you want them to listen you do that again listen if you do that again right and guess what a parent knows their temperance they know how much how much patience they got they know what's going to break them hello they know that listen i'm i don't want to punish her lord i don't want to punish him god but I, i'm just like i already warned them they still doing it three weeks in a row they still constantly doing this three years you've been doing this six years you've been doing this mm, no what happens when grace run out and then we want to cry and run for prayer? And the father said, I gave you chances after chances. And this is with everybody, right? Whether you're married or single, there's a level of temperance, patience, acknowledgement, but you can't transform and renew your mind if you're not even willing to repent, right? Some of us avoid repentance so we can still sin. Avoiding repentance so... No, we repent to change, not to repeat. I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect and it never happens, but you have to acknowledge those things and say, Father, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm dealing with. And I need help. I need you to send me a leader that can help me. Right? We all need accountability. There's accountability doesn't stop, right? It's in Hebrews, it's in the Bible. He, he listen, he gives us shepherds after his own heart, right? And so some things we don't want to submit to. So we feel like if we don't have a leader, <laughs> then we don't have to be accountable. And that's not true, right? We we all need to be accountable in everything. And it starts with self-identification. And if you don't know who you are in that process, find you an accountability partner that can help you identify who you are so you can hear God's voice for yourself. Right. We don't want that full accountability. Oh, I'll just listen to so. So I'll tap on this live and I'll tap on that live and I'll tap on this and I'll tap on that because I don't want that accountability. You know, if you're on 50, uh, 50 million people's lives and you don't have no cover and all these things, it's avoiding accountability. Mm -hmm. It's avoiding being a part of the body. Imagine you you just offer, you just got your hand. This say, say your hand is supposed to be a part of ministry. But it's not connected to nothing. What can you pick up without the arm? Hello. What, what can you pick up without the elbow? And so you're trying to see why you can't obtain these things that God has for you. But who are you connected to, truly? Right? And so surrenderance means that I identify who I am, right? I understand that I'm this hand. But I understand I can't do it by myself. I've been equipped to do certain things. Hello. I've been equipped to do certain things but I can't function properly unless I'm connected to the body with my gift. So I may be able to operate in the anointing that God has called me in. Hello. And so we have to understand that it's all a process. It, it may not be easy, but it's worth it. Huh? It may not be easy. Oh, it was better out in the world. No, it wasn't. Right? The, the enemy made it easy for you to have access to certain things to keep you out there. Hello. So now if you're making a change and a shift, then it's going to be a little bit of friction, but I'd rather be inside than out, right? I'd rather be inside than out. So as a single person, I would tell you, do not be a busybody, right? Don't, don't use God as a rebound. Build your relationship 
so you can understand before the relationship comes. And so you can understand those things that need to drop off. You'll be able to surrender them because you understand who the father is to you. And you're accountable to that cleansing. You're accountable to not affecting anybody because everything that we do, whether it be good or bad, y'all, it affects everybody. Whether it be good or bad, it will affect everybody in a good or a bad way, right? And so we want our life to speak for us. We want our legacy to speak for us. And in order to have a proper legacy, because you're saying that you want to be married, in order to have a proper legacy, guess what? It starts now and it starts today. Amen. Father, if y'all didn't get the fire from between them two, you're missing something. You ain't listening. Y'all. Your ears ain't open. It. Uh, Shana, are you on here? Shana Singleton? I saw your face and then it kind of just disappeared for a minute. Because Denise is trying to reach out to you. I guess they were trying to tag you into a line, but didn't realize you was in here. So there's some confusion because they're sending me screenshots. But God bless. So we're moving on. Harold is going to uh, introduce the panelists. I see two of them are not here, but we're going to roll right on on and keep on going. Um, he's going to introduce everyone. And it, she already gave us the definition for Thrive, but we're going to give it to everybody. I think one of them just came in. Um, Elder uh, Coleman just came in. So, uh, Pastor Hines, you want to introduce everybody? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God! Oh man, after that, I don't, I don't even want to speak, but I will do what thus says the Lord. Um, the introduction of panelists, uh, of course, you have myself, Pastor Harold Hines, and also my wife, uh, Prophet Antoinette Hines. Um, we are the founders and creators of H two. Global Ministries, and she is the founder, creator, CEO, all of those things of Uniquely Me. Um, also, we have Apostle Monty Burley. Uh, he was the first speaker. He is the creator, founder, originator, uh, CEO. Uh, I think that's enough. For Fire of the Ruach Ministries. Um and he does a lot of live uh, with men, uh, dealing with men and dealing with the mantle. Uh, so if you get a chance, please tune in, because I'm, I'm telling you, uh, even if you're not a male, um, you will learn a lot. Very inspiring. Um, we also have Apostle, ooh, good God Almighty, Apostle Simona Major Muldro, Muldro, excuse me, um, she is also the founder, creator, CEO, all of those things of Abundant Life Ministries and Becoming Her. And she is the young lady that just brought fire to this to this session, to this gathering. Oh, my God. Uh, I thank both of you thus far. Um, and we also have, I don't see Miss Lakeisha Washington uh, but she is also uh, one of the speakers and she is the, uh, her ministry or her, it looks like it says, take your mask off LLC. Um, she is the, uh, I guess the owner of that and creator of that. And we also have elder Alvin Germain Coleman. Uh, he will also be speaking. Uh, but again, I thank you, everyone. Uh, I apologize. We were supposed to do this earlier, but um, we kind of got away from it. But thank you, God, for reminding and that we're able to go back and, and add this in because it's so important that we, you know, we give credit to where, you know, who the speakers are. And we we thank, thank God for allowing us to have this opportunity for them to be able to speak and bring forth the word and bring forth teaching knowledge, whatever is necessary. So we thank you again. Back over to you, Antoinette. Thank you, babe, love you. Um, the thrive, to thrive means to do well, or you are successful, healthy, strong. It is. It is. A, it also means to prosper, to flourish, to be increasing, to grow and to be developing. And I love that the ING means it's ongoing. You are developing, you're being equipped, you're prospering, you're in movement. And when we're talking about thriving, it's a part of what we have to do. And that means we have to attach our faith to continue to move forward. Faith requires you to work. 
facts. We're not just idly doing things just because just to say we're doing something. I love how they both brought up the fact about being busy. We don't want to be busy doing things and they're not God things because they're good things. And I heard my, my one of my spiritual friends always says this. It, there's a God thing. and There's a good thing. You can be busy doing a good thing, but it's a God thing. Did God call that to your hands? Did God tell you to do that? And so and when he called us to do this singles and marriage conference, I was like, OK, Lord, we'll be married. He's like, yeah, but you were single at some point. And I won. And so some of the questions will hit some of y'all in different ways. And we're going to hit all four of the panelists. And I think there's three on here. So we'll chime in as well because there's one missing. But we're going to go into the questions part. And so some of the things we're addressing as we talk about the panels, um, I'm just going to jump right into the questions if y'all don't mind, if you're about ready to go. We're ready to go. So these questions were from singles and actually some married people and some divorced people also had some questions who are now newly, newly single from coming through divorce. How do I thrive being single when everyone around me is in a relationship? Because that means you're getting a view from everybody around you is in a relationship, but you're still single. How do you continue to thrive when everyone around you seems to be in some form of a relationship? Apostle Burley. Okay, I'm going to answer this in two parts, all right? For one, and I'm just saying this from a single person's point of view, <laughs> one thing as a single person you have to understand, every just because everybody is in a relationship does not mean it's great, it's wonderful, they're happy, everything is going around. And for me personally, coming from a single male, I would rather be single than be dating or married to somebody catching hell. I'm not saying you won't have good days. I'm not saying you won't have bad days. But if you are green every time I turn around, I don't look at that as something that it makes me want to, you know, reach out and grab it. Oh, I got to have that. But one of the tools I can also say when dealing with that is understanding if it is somebody and you're like, oh, I wish I had that, understand and come to your mindset that. You know, just like they will get it, yours is coming down the line, but there is still a process that, you know, you need to go through. And even though it may be difficult, but what I find myself doing is keeping myself preoccupied. And when I say preoccupied, I mean, I don't allow myself, like for that one, that specific thing right there, I don't find myself, we we may hang out, hang out but I'm not going to hang out with a lot of couples. Why? Because then that mindset of I need somebody comes in. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's not your hook. But if that's your hook and you know that makes you and leads you to go and call up them Google contacts as Apostle Simone to say, or get that black book, then for you, you know, you may need to get you some single friends that are happily single, or you might need to go with a mixed group so that you won't feel that way because, you know, it's the constant look of this is, even though I understand it's what is in my eye, gate, it's what I see and what I see is causing me to long after something um, that is not to me. So I tell people, you know, be be proactive, put yourself in a condition to win because listen, I, if I see a bunch of single folks and they all, I, I'm over here. Anybody see me? They be like, why are you over there? I'm minding my business because people start saying, oh, I wish I had that. It makes me want to so, knock over their drink and knock over their cup, their, their flowers because they so they so lovely. <laughs> and sick. I'm not about to be bitter watching you in your head. So I'm just going to do that. Another thing you can find yourself to do is take yourself out. Then as single people have to learn how to take yourself out. If you mm -hmm. will start doing stuff for you, taking personal time for you, you won't be worrying so much about what other people do for others because you understand you can do it for yourself. And this is not saying that, you know, you're big headed and you don't need nobody, but it's teaching you how to love on you. There's nothing wrong with going to get your feet done. There's nothing wrong going to get a massage. There's nothing wrong going to see a movie by yourself. Don't see no, um, we call them chick, chick flicks, but don't go see no couple in romantic movies if you know today is that time of the month, the rain is just right, the weather is just right, and loneliness is knocking at your door. Don't go see them love movies. You're setting yourself up. We being transparent. 
Don't set yourself up, but go find something you like. Go find something that is fun and go find something that you know that is an action movie. Go take yourself out to eat. Go, go take a walk on the beach or something. Take time with you so that when you're around, when you do have to be around those, you don't feel like you're inadequate. Because really what it is, is you're missing something and you want it. But then, you know, I need that. But then the first person that come and be like, oh, you look nice. You look handsome. You pretty. You want to give them a piece of time. And you thinking that you got this beautiful arrangement, but you got a bunch of dead flowers. You know, some people that carry the appearance of what... I'm going to go there. Sometimes when we are in singleness and we hang around a lot of married people, the, the enemy hears your words too. What does that mean? That means if you don't tame yourself and get yourself into a place where you're loving on you, what you will find yourself doing is you will find yourself saying, oh God, I wish I hear that. But what does the enemy do? The enemy sends it to you dressed up nice with the bow. And I mean, it's every it's every, when it presents itself, it's everything on that list, fellas. It's it's it, that that woman is a dime bag. She believes in God. She does this. Her hair is nice, ladies. That fella is to a, a GQ. He got a nice car. He got a job. He got a nice suit. Then you come to find out the car belongs to his wife. Come on here. You say, oh, I got a, I got a Christian woman. Oh, she looks nice. She's everything I wanted. But then you realize she's not as Christian as what you think she is. And be, and I'm, this is something that's real. You realize she want a Christian man by sight, but not a Christian man at home. Come on now. And because you, because you as a man want to keep your values and stay to God, your masculinity gets attacked. You got to be gay. Something got to be wrong with you. Come on here. You, uh, 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 if you don't sleep with me, if you, if you don't do this, something wrong with you. You ain't no real man. Um, ladies, when that man, oh, ain't nothing wrong if if you just give me a little piece, or if you if you do that, that's not technically having sex because it looks. Come on here. It looks like what you ask for. It looks like what you're portraying, and then you find out that gas bill high over there. That water bill high over there. Why is it high? Because it cost you pain because it wasn't what you thought it was because you rushed to the first thing that looked like your list. All right, I pass to the next panelist. I forgive me, I forgot to mute my mic back. Uh, he just slapped me all across the head when I'm talking about that, these young folks just. Uh, see, we got another male in here, uh, Elder Jermaine. You, uh, you want, I think you just came in. So he says, How do you thrive in signals when everyone else is around you is in a relationship? And you are a male, so we're gonna go with y'all first. How do you thrive in your singleness? You're muted, you're muted. I said, Apostle was walking here, but I thought I was gonna have to send him with cash here. I mean, because he, he was nailing everything, but I, I think he also thought, I, I think he also, I would say, it starts with yourself as an individual. Because you can't be with somebody else if you're not situated yourself. Um, like for example, at the at the present moment, I'm currently single. I'm not married. I'm not dating anyone. But I see what it feels like. You know, I sit in both sides. All of my friends, literally, they're married. So sometimes it's like, okay, like Apostle was just saying, I'm like, okay, I, I need to leave from this conversation. You know, I don't have nobody to go home with, or you know, this is like, okay, this is past my pay grade. So what I do as a man, I'll just kind of step back, you know, and, you know, and kind of get out of the way because that's not my lane. I don't, I don't go home with no woman. If I can just be real, I'm not going home to no thighs. And I'm just be honest. I'm not going to home. Somebody can rule my head. You know, it's not going to be the same. So I'm not going to set myself up and be stuck. And then I'm at the altar crying for forgiveness when all this could have been avoided. So, like Apostle was saying, there are boundaries that we must set and we must do because the enemy doesn't care if you're a bishop, archbishop, superintendent, overseer, arch, you know, he doesn't care. So we have to make sure that we keep our heart and our posture pure because like Apostle was saying, even those movies, that can set you up. Easily, surely, but surely, but surely, you will be set up and you have to be careful what you do, what you watch and who you, you know, come across that way your spirit is not vexed. But I think it also starts for a male, as I know for me, 
I know myself, so I'm not even gonna put myself in no hot box like that. I have to make sure before I even try to date anybody that I got my life, my priorities, my stuff before I try to bring anybody together to date. That way, I'm not trying to figure out how to pay no house mortgage. I'm not trying to figure out how to pay no car note. I'm not trying to figure out how to do things where the man should be taking care of those things and not depend on the woman. You know, I was supposed to lead my family. I'm supposed to be the one, to, you know, to take care of people. I'm supposed to be make sure everybody's situated. I'm last. But if you're not taught that and you're not explained that, you know, in the early ages, you'd be in a mess, you know, because no woman wants a punk as a man. Nobody. I mean, Elder Hines, I know you. your wife don't play. She don't She don't play radio. She don't even let you cut, cut, cut it on. So, you know, and that's how it should be. You know, the woman looks at the man for, you know, guidance, what well, well, we're building, where we're going. And that's something that you have to learn being single. You can't try to learn that married because the woman going to be looking at you like, nigga, you know, what you got? I mean, I mean I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm, possible, I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. Y'all y'all take my license. I, I, it's okay. I, I'll still, I still love everybody. But I'm just being honest because it's real talk. You know, even when it comes to credit, you know, women want men with good credit. You know, you need to just be honest. That way, nobody down the road, because this lying stuff will catch up with you and it's too late. And we all know Apostle and all the other men, women don't do well with lying. They get, they, it, it's, it's always in the back of their mind. Remember, you lie, you lie. And then you got to deal with that. And I don't have time for that. You know, I love my life too precious. So it's best to be transparent and honest from the beginning when you're dating someone, talking to someone. That way, that person will know if they want to fool with you or not. That way, it's not secrets, and it's down the line where it's like, like Apostle said, Apostle Burley said, well, I thought you had this, I thought you had that. And to come to find out, you got a 1987 Oldsmobile. Now, don't get me wrong, nothing's wrong with that. But we need, this is the major, this should leave the camera, she started laughing. But what I'm saying is, and you're right, you have to be honest, I'm just being honest. That way, a what, see it, Elder Hines, you ain't right. You over there laughing. But I'm just being, I'm being perfectly honest. You have to be honest. That way, either male, female, each party know what they're getting themselves into. That way, I'm sorry. That way, down the line, nobody is mad, frustrated. They know from day one, hey, listen, this is what I have to bring to the table. This is what I have. I got student loans. Like I'll use myself, for example. Um, I kind of have a unique situation. I don't have time to go into it, but I don't, I'm, I'm debt free. It's kind of, it's, 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 it's a different situation. Um, you know, I've been very blessed and favored, but I'm an old soul, so I don't believe in creating bills. So, you know, I do what I have to do to keep on to my stuff, my clothes, my cars. If I don't have to do that, and that's something that was instilled in me, but I'm saying that because that was morals instilled in me. It was instilled in me to go make bills when it's unnecessary. It wasn't instilled for me to use my credit cards when I don't need something. I'm not going to do that. That's poor stewardship. So, you know, I was brought up, you take care of your finances. That way, when you move and you meet someone, you want to get married, you want to up and up. You know, you don't have to be trying to figure out how to dodge to pay this. Because all women are going to look at a man crazy they don't have enough money to take get their nails done. I'm just being honest. Hair, feet, and other essentials. Women like, um, what you call it? Uh, allowances. You know, some women like that. So they want to be able to feel, you know, secure. But as a man, you can't do that if you got a lot going on. Because they're going to be looking at you like. So, you know, all of those things in dating goes back to what Apostle said. You can't get caught up into what other people are like because they're happy. Because sometimes I know a lot of people that's married is not happy. That stuff is for sages. And that's for either Facebook or for, for the world. And some people don't even sleep in the same room. So that's my take on it, Prophetess. Well, he made me laugh so but he didn't put the tr the whole truth out there. He didn't put the whole truth out there. Uh, Miss Lakeisha Washington has finally joined us, y'all. Uh, so I'm gonna push this question to you because we got well, Harold Hines. I know you mayor, but you got anything to say? You're muted before you. Okay. No, um, not much. It just. Just uh, to piggyback on what uh, Elder Jermaine was saying, just uh, just making sure that you have yourself together. Um, that's one of the things that before I met you, uh, but 
You remember I, I didn't date for about nine months. Uh, and there were opportunities. There were, you know, women in my DMs, women that I met through other people that hooked me up. And I just didn't feel like I was ready. I mean, I had just come out of a, a four or five year uh, relationship. And so I had to take time to get myself together, mentally, spiritually, financially, emotionally, all of those things before I could even jump in. And again, there were, like he said, like I think Pastor Burley said, you, you, there were some dimes. Not, my wife is a dime too, but I'm just saying there were, there were some dimes that, but I was like, I'm not ready for that. That's not the right relationship for me. And I'm not ready for that. I don't feel like I have myself together. And even when I met my wife, you know, we were just friends, but she'll tell you, and she can attest that she was asking me, am I ready for a relationship? I told her, no, I wasn't ready for anybody. And it was nothing against her because she's beautiful. It's just that I didn't have myself together. And so, I say this, get yourself together in a number of ways, financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, get that stuff together so you don't carry that baggage into a relationship or a marriage. You know, you don't want that because then you're, you're having to repair that um, throughout the marriage or the relationship. So, Get yourself together right in those areas. And I thank God that he allowed me the, the opportunity to do those things. So that's it. Apostle, uh, I think I, I don't know if I call Lakeisha. Lakeisha, you want to go ahead and answer how do you thrive in your singleness uh, when everybody else is around you, everybody else around you is in relationship. A lot of them have given, they've answered a lot of the questions. I don't even know if they know that the questions were out there, but they answered a lot of the questions, but go ahead. So the way I thrive, hello everyone, sorry, I'm Lakeisha Washington and I am the CEO of Take Your Mask Off, um, where I encourage, educate, and help elevate um, individuals and especially young girls to walk in their true identity, who Christ made them to be. Um, but the way I walk in my singleness is, is a choice. Um, I've made a choice, um, like Apostle Hines has said, I made a choice um, to get myself together first. Um, do I have people coming after me? I do. Um, but I choose to get myself together so there won't be any lingering baggage from other stuff that I have made dealt with um, in the past. Um, I'm very, very honest to myself um, and I don't settle anymore. And so in that, in my singleness now, I'm much happier because I've embraced my singleness. Um, I've embraced who I am. I've embraced my flaws. I've embraced just the totality of who I am as a person. And so in my single, I just choose to just stand my ground and say, I'm not ready and continue to prosper in that way. I can't ask Apostle uh, Simona this because she's married, but uh, at some point before the marriage three years ago, uh, she was single. So Apostle Simona, you want to give some insight because you got a lot of your, your, your tribe is in here. A lot of becoming. I know, married. right? They, they're rolling deep in here. Um, so when Apostle Monty was talked, not Apostle Monty, that was, what's the other gentleman's name? Because I don't have my chat, like, the back to back. Elder Coleman. Elder Coleman. Elder Coleman was talking about the setup, right? And so before, um, before I got married, there are a lot of times where we, you know, women, as women, we are already equipped. So I'm gonna hurt some feelings. We are already equipped. So um, like Apostle Monty said, what we do is sometimes we look at marriages and be like, oh, I want to get married. I can't wait to get married. This and that. So we'll start orchestrating, even as men and women, we'll start orchestrating things, right? We'll start setting things up because we want what we want and we want what we want it to look like. And so we'll be, I'm going to just say this. I'm going to put this out here. Living together is not marriage. <clears throat> Somebody type that. Living together it's not marriage. Apostle, you're talking good. Good listen, God Almighty. Jesus Christ. Listen, living together is not marriage. I'm going to tell you what. As women, we are nurturers. We are incubators. We we love to do, right? We, we cook. We clean. We do. But all it takes is one uh, a man pair of shoes and, and he in there. 
We don't ask about uh, the mama, the daddy. We don't ask the questions. We don't have conversations. Hello. I'm just saying we don't have conversation. Are men uh, vulnerable to do the same? Yes. Right. And so sometimes you end up finding yourself repeating a cycle and y'all living together for nine, uh, nine years and there's no marriage. Right. It becomes a convenience. So listen, 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 living together does not equal marriage. John 4 and 17, 18, just in case somebody needed that scripture. Listen, but we do we do work and efforts. We uh, we receive less and we're not satisfied, but yet we settle. Right. And so we have to have those honest conversations, as Elder Coleman was saying, because a lot of times people are saying that they're ready for marriage, but they're not honest before the marriage. They're not honest as far as the debt. They're not honest as far as situations they're in. They're not honest um, as far as anger issues or um, not being able to stop sleeping with people and things like, you know, you got to have that conversation. Like, you know, like uh, Pastor Hines was saying, he wasn't ready, but somebody would have said, I'm ready. No, they're not. Right. And a lot of times we use people as rebounds when we come out of stuff. Right. But that was on the con honest conversation that he had. Right. But I find as women and I'm not bashing women, I find as women because we're already prepared. We're already ready in our mindset. We'll take care of anything that comes in the door. Right. And so, oh, I love him. We've been together. Y'all been together four years and there's no ring. There's no consistency. There's no, um, there's no relationship with God. You got the relationship with God that he does and you satisfied with that. Y'all not married. And then we say, God, what's wrong? Why am I waiting this long? Lord say you out of alignment. Huh? If you're going to date unequally, yo, what, what is the marriage going to be? Where's the promise at in that? And we get mad at God, but the promise was never there in that scenario. Right. And it may have been an experience and the lesson that you had to have, but a lot of people don't want to come out of that experience. They want to stay there. So those of you who who are living together. Right. It's just you you just at a convenience, but you still in sin. Right. And sometimes it, you know, how we say, oh, Pastor, it happened by accident. He's brought his shoes over. And the next thing you know, the shirt came over and then, you know, I was cooking for him. And then, you know, I had picked T.T. up. That the baby now. That his baby. You don't pick T.T. up, you know, y'all start playing house. Have I done it before? Yeah, come on now. Let's be real. Let's be real transparent. Don't act like you never did it before. Come on now. Let's, let's come on. But we cannot live in sin and call it God. It's just not. So I would say this. When we see people that are married, we think, we, you know, I used to think I was missing something. I'm being honest. I, I used to think I was missing something. I was like, oh. Look how they all love it, dub it. They ain't got to worry about nothing. Listen, but let me tell you, sex ain't all about marriage. Somebody type that for me. Sex is not all about marriage. It's not. Right? Paul said it's better to be single. And I used to wonder, I'm like, why Paul act like that now? He a hater. I said, this don't make no sense. I said, he don't want, he don't want people to be married. I'm like, what's wrong with him? But you got to understand there's a certain freedom that you have in God to do what you need to do. You can go all out for God, build that relationship, still do what you need to do. But when you are married, it's no longer just about you. Hello. Now you got other responsibilities, other things that did not belong to you that becomes your, your, your issue. Hello. All these things. And Paul said, listen, I'd rather you be single, just build your relationship with God so you know who you are. <laughs> Because taking on another responsibility, hello, just like children, it's a decision, right? Sometimes it's a decision, sometimes, but it's still a decision because you have, well, okay. It's still a decision, <laughs> either way. So children, you can compare it to marriage, right? Some things we, we get into because of our choices, hello, our previous choices. But understand this, living together does not equate marriage. It is by law here in these states. But unto God, you will go to hell. Okay? So, yeah, we, like Apostle Minor said, taste the see. Some of us have tasted some things. We just had to have it. Oh. Oh. Hey. Who? Listen. We just had to have it. Be in the club. I'd be like, hmm. Hmm. 
top. Don't even worry about it. I'm gonna just pass by him and I'm gonna get his number. Cause you know, mm -mm, cause you know, uh, brother so and so, you know they get married next week. I got to have a date, so I'm just go ahead and get his number, and I'm just <sighs> next thing you know, you done sin. Now you got a headache. Now you pray. <sighs> Come on, living together does not equate marriage. If I'm too raw for y'all. I'm not apologizing. God bless you. I'm loving it then, Raw, but since she opened the door, we finna pull, pull on her again. So she mentioned being equally yoked because this is one of the questions that came because I asked questions, so I got a whole shoot of questions, y'all. Um, what is equally yoked and what is equally yoked? Is that just for spiritual or is that a full round of your life? Does it apply to dating as well? Apostle Simona, since you brought it up, equally yoked. Repeat, repeat the question for me. You be what is equally yoked and does that apply to dating as well? So to, to in my perspective, right? Equally yoked means uh that both of us are saved, right? But what I see in you will take me to my destiny. Mm. Right? That's that's how it should be. What I see in you, because we submit ourselves as women, hello. Right, we submit ourselves as women to say I do. So that means you are accepting. Now you you're still under the covenant of God, but you also submitting yourself to that man. Whether it be bad credit, whether it be uh, whatever dysfunction, you're submitting yourself to that, right? And so this is where conversations have to occur, right? Can that man lead you to your destiny? Mm. Can he assist you? Can he go with you? Can y'all be on one accord? Do y'all have the same vision? Is his business, you know, is it can it line up with what you got going on? Right? Well, possibly too late, I'm married. Okay. Right? That's where it comes compromise conversation to see where that we're not in a marriage conference. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, right, that person that you decide that should be equally yoked with you, should believe in your vision and you should believe in his vision. He should have a vision. Come on. He should have a vision, right? Now, a lot of times we go into dating in facades, right? And so you, this is why you have to have conversation because if not, you know, and people, people love to say, oh, you know, y'all been together this long, you should know. No, we all change and transform on a daily basis. Let's just be honest. But this is where conversations have to occur because sometimes people want things so bad, they'll become whatever they need to be for you to believe them. Looking at every chat. They'll become whoever they need to be to get you, they'll become, and the people are like, oh, you should have known better. Mm, yeah, sometimes, listen, again, this goes down to self identification and your relationship with God. Who? Just pop your hand and just keep going. Just pop your hand, just keep going. You have to have conversations, but I'm going to lose him. You have to have a choice because let me tell you, if you have a mask, you're not really giving that person a fair chance to decide if they can be able to live with you or not. You're not giving them a fair chance and a fair decision. They're, they're making their decision based on what you're bringing to the table of who you say you are, what you are doing, what your expectations are, what your promises are. Here we go with these promises, all these things, right? We bring all that to the table. That's just like uh, Pastor Monty said, you know, you're dating a person. And that actually kind of happened a little bit, Apostle Monty. I was just like, no, he did. <laughs> you date a person, right? You can date a person a long time because y'all not living together, right? So you don't know what, what type of life he has or she has outside of what they're showing you. Hello. You only know sometimes what they are showing. You can ask God to reveal it, but guess what? If your emotions override with God revealing, you're going to take yourself through it anyway. It don't even matter. It don't even matter. But I love God. You don't love God. Y'all don't. Listen. 
we say we do, but we want to face those answers. And so when we come with a fake facade of who we are, we cheat that person of that opportunity for real because they're only going by their perception about what you're showing them. You're cheating them out of their decision, or honest decision. But they made a conscious decision to say yes. So I will say, equally yoke, can you assist me as we go on this destiny ride? Can you support my vision and not compete in it, right? Can you, can can I, per, can I help you in your pursuance, right? Because sometimes a man has a vision and he don't want nobody to touch it, right? I'm just talking about previous experiences, right? I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, you got it. But can you be a part of that vision? If you feel like you're excluded already and you're dating that man or that woman, you feel like you're excluded already, run. Picture yourself doing it for 9, 10, 20 years, right? Cheating yourself because you like to look. Cheating yourself because you heard about how they were in bed, so you just feel like you got to be that one. Nobody else can't get them, so you 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 already know you in there, so you just want to stick with it because of the look. But can they assist you to get the destiny? Can they assist you in purpose in that progress that you need to go in? Let's just be honest, right? The same marriage class, so I'm not going to go into what else I was going to say. But I will say this. Don't allow nobody to cheat you out of your promise. Have those uncomfortable conversations, right? And sometimes you say, Pastor, well, you know, they, they, they real good. Yeah, people are real good pretenders. But at the end of the day, can God change them? Yes, God can, if they allow it. Hello. Pastor, I, I have a question. I think a lot of times... And I, I could use myself um, just being transparent. Um, a lot of the time, I think we'll mess up a lot of men. They're not really taught coming up. So it's a facade to put up like I know. And let's just be honest. No man don't want a woman to know they don't know. So what happens is, um, because this almost happened to me, I'm just being honest with you, and I stopped it. Um, I got a mentor that was like, yo, nephew, don't do that. You got to do this, you know. That's not gonna work. And men don't be, and men, like I said, men, I'm not beating us up. I'm just, you know, just being transparent. We don't want a woman to know we don't know. Mm. We want to make it seem like, you know, we know everything because we men, you know, yeah, I got it, you know, I got it. But if you don't know, I was always taught, ask if you don't know. And a woman will respect you better if you ask and she see you trying. But if you act like you got it together, they're not gonna wanna rock with you. It's gonna be like, oh no, this. You know this dude, but you have to be transparent and say, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that goes. Can you share that with me? You know, I don't know how to build credit. How do I do that? I was never taught that. You know, men are not going to do that, but you have to do that in this season because life is different now. You know, women well, know you don't got your stuff together. They're not going to too much fool with you. They just be honest. He's going to be like, oh, okay. But if they see you're trying, they will make the effort and say, you know what, he's trying. He doesn't know, but I'm going to help him. I'm not going to pay his bill, but I'm going to show him how to pay it. Because some men really just honestly, you will be surprised they don't know. Because that father wasn't there to say, hey, you do this, you do this, you do this. They wasn't there for that. I know my dad wasn't there for that. So that's when I had to transfer, transfer into mentor mode from one of my mentors, one of my spiritual fathers, and he had to guide me. So when the time is right, I'll know how to do that and won't be making bad mistakes, thinking a woman trying to put me down when she's really trying to be a potential helpmate. That's where that pride come in at. That's where that pride come in at. Why does God give us, somebody answer this for me. Why does God say that the women are helpmates, right? We, we're not there to just cook and clean and things like that, right? But because of, I'm just saying out of experience, like you said, we don't know. Even sometimes women don't know, right? But we can be so independent that we don't want to hear anything we think we know, right? But it comes a time of humility that has to transpire when you are dating. Right. Because at the end of the day, you you like you said, you may need help. And that woman has the answer. That's the purpose. Help me. You have to be willing to have those conversations. Say, I don't know. Does it make you less of a man? No. If you know everything, you need to go up on oh, oh, going on. You know, we can't go into relationships thinking we know it. We can't go into ministries and think we know everything. OK, Pasamati, me hit me. All right, since, since y'all don't open the door, let me go ahead and walk on through it. Um, 
I it is pride, but some and I actually this next thing it goes on both sides. Um, and it happens in singleness and it happens for the females and the males because the women are affected just just as well. But I think part of it comes from residue from old relationships. You know, and I, I, I this is what I'm learning now in 2023. What I have learned is everybody was a good man or a good woman at one point. Right. And then they got that one that they should have closed themselves off to and it broke them. So now we get to the mindset is we're not going to let anybody else put me in that in that area. So what happens is until God brings somebody or I'm going to say until somebody is skilledly fit to deal with us that can break down those walls, that can break down that hurt, that can break down that pain until we can find somebody that is quote unquote worthy of that. We don't open up women or men to allow them to come in because it's like, we're we not going through that again. You're you not about to get me twice because I almost died in that place. I almost lost my identity in that place. I done gave my all. I done, I done, uh, I done, I done helped him raise his kids. I done took care of her kids, done put her in a house, and I done came home and she done took all my stuff, put it in a U-Haul, and I don't know where she is. Come on now. Come on now. I done, I done, I done, done all these things for them because you know, when you when you talk about equally yoked, a lot of pain comes from not being equally yoked. And when I say equally yoked, I'm going to give another perspective. Sometimes we see what looks good and not what balances us out. Equally yoked is more than just being, quote unquote, even with someone, but it's the ability to be weak in the presence of another. Come on now, where they balance you out with strength. So that means if I lose my temper, you are the one to calm my temper down and you are the one to, to, to help the situation. If I am weak and I'm going through a grief process, you are somebody who can pick me up. You know, uh, uh, we talk about, because we're talking about singles, if I'm your husband or if I'm dating you or and I'm, I'm your man and I lose my job, are you going to chastise my manhood? Come on now, because we got fellas on here. Are you going to tear me down as a man? Not because I did anything intentionally, not because I'm broke, not because I don't have the mindset not to work, not because I'm not a man, but because of the simple fact that I got to this place where I lost my job. Are you going to make me feel less than or are you going to be my helpmate? And assist me in getting back up, assist me in rising up. And even with women, women who have miscarriages, women who uh, go through depression when birth, women who have been through so much um, just in general in life, are you going to help balance out the pain? Are you going to show me that you can be a safe place or are you going to manipulate? Because see, with women are a little bit different than men because when it comes to women, it's not really about the hurt. It's a, are you coming into my life to manipulate that hurt? Are you coming in to take advantage because now you see an open door for you to walk in and manipulate it? Are you going to use that to your advantage to get what you want and then I'm left with nothing? Or let's go to the woman's uh, worst dream once she feels that she found somebody or are you going to walk away from me but when it comes to a man you know it's a little the hurt is a little bit different the, the hurt is you know you made me look weak you hurt me and you made me look weak so I'm gonna get you before you get me I got friends I got you listen I tell them all the time you wrong you can't I said no because two wrongs don't make a right and if you look my perspective we talk about equally yoke. My perspective, I'm gonna leave this with y'all and I'm gonna pass it to another pa panelist. My perspective is this. If you truly love someone and if somebody truly loves you, they would never do anything to put you in a position that will cause you harm, that will cause ladies, that will cause uh, you to go to jail that will cause you to uh, you to have tickets, come on here, that will cause you to be without them, come on here, Let, let's talk about it. They will never do anything to put you in a position to have to experience the absence of them. 
You know, they would never, they, yeah, like Apostle Scott said, unless you're married into it. Why is that? Because if I love you, I don't, I, I, all I think about is your happiness. I don't want harm to come to you. I don't want you to be broke. I don't want you to be in a place uh, where you're unhappy because you being unhappy makes me unhappy. We talk about equally yoked. If you equally yoke, what you do on your side over there affects me. And if I'm okay with it, we not equally yoked. We not equally yoked. If if I'm okay with how you live in your life and I know you can do better, we not equally yoked. Because even as a man as a, and as a woman, you have you have a purpose and an assignment to elevate them. You know, and that's where I feel that we're in. But I'm gonna pass on and digress. <laughs> that as well um when it comes to singleness what i'm learning is um vulnerability is a strength and if we can't be vulnerable with our partner or someone we're interested in how can we become one you know and so that's what i'm learning and also patience like you were saying upon Monty, if i got your back and i'm your helpmate i'm not going to degrade you because you lost your job i'm going to hold up the end that you're you're lacking on because again if i can't hold your end up when you're weak i'm just expecting to just take from you that's still unequally yoked so you when you're weak you know i can help hold you up and when i'm weak you're going to hold me up and that's where i feel the bonding of becoming equally yoked can start you know and i think uh, again with our men i'm raising a son uh, and i'm a single mom and so i teach him vulnerability i teach him how to connect with his emotions i teach him it's okay for a man to cry not you know you're not no punk but god gave you tears for a reason so if you can't be vulnerable at this stage in your life how can you connect to your potential wife later on emotionally and so that's one thing that we talk about a lot is emotions and your mental health because if you're not in connect with yourself how can you connect with somebody else on an emotional state? So I really feel like vulnerability is such a strength that we look over. Vulnerability is not a weakness. Vulnerability is not less than. Vulnerability is like the power, you know, the the um, the superpower, I call it. My son, I call him all the time. That's your superpower to say, I'm hurting. Look, I need help. It doesn't make you less than, you know, and in, in my singleness, I'm learning that I am very independent, but I understand if I want my husband to come, I have to learn to be vulnerable and to be able to let him come in to hold me up in my weakness. Is it a challenge? It sometimes is because I, I, I do everything, but if I want that person to come in eventually in my life, I have to learn, okay, I got to let him in for him to see that I'm weak here or that I, I need help here or no, I got it because I don't need no man for nothing. That's a whole lot from the pit for them. So I'm understanding that vulnerability is the key for me and my singleness, you know? Um, and again, if we can just take the stigma off of that, we can really become and we can really hear from God who we need to connect with on different levels, not just, you know, dating on just different levels, period. You know, just understanding that vulnerability is a strength and not a weakness. OK, so I uh, just read a comment that, that got me, but I'm trying to stick. So I'm trying to stay in line. Well, geez, these questions are y'all are hitting them. I'm having to go off and mark off questions so we don't go back to them. But as you were talking. Um, Apostle said something about the false appearance and that's the imposter and normally we get the imposter before we get the real thing so ladies know that that imposter can come up to take up space like the enemy will send you exactly what you're asking for to keep the real one for coming who can help you reach your destiny so pay attention oh. when you send those stop signs and the red flags stop running through them we went right through the stop signs and right through the red flag like they went through there we see it. Holy Spirit be tugging all on you, telling you this ain't it. He ain't the one. But because we don't want to be by ourselves. 203. Listen, because we don't want to be and by 24 ourselves. 24 cents. We run right on through. We run right on through the stop signs. We run right on through everything in front of us because we just don't want to be alone. And so we don't we we want what God has for us. You have to pay attention. Stop running through the stop signs. Stop. 
So we talked about unequal yoke. We talked about the vulnerability and patience. But here's one that the question that really had me wondering, and these these two kind of go together. How do we achieve wholeness in being single when we have so much trauma and bad cultural habits from our past? How do you walk into wholeness, and how do you? When do you know it's time to start dating? If you hold it, you got trauma, you got baggage, you got issues. How do you move into wholeness, and when do you know it's time to date? These were questions really like I sent out for these questions, y'all. Who I don't know who want to go first. Okay. okay, let me let me start off first. Um, I would say when you when you identify that you have trauma, the first the first step, of course, is identifying it. How do you identify it? You identify it when you're triggered. You identify, and, and we all, whether you acknowledge, you all know certain triggers. You know if somebody, uh, you know if somebody mentions your mom, you become triggered. Um, for me, since we in here and I'm triggered, a female yelling at me is a trigger. So, you know, if anybody has ever witnessed it, I might get real quiet because I'm in a place of before nut if you buck and I'm still saved. You know, and, and I'm, I'm just being transparent. So, you know, if you were somebody and you were to do that, you know, to me, that's a trigger for me that'll set me off. So how do I, you know, when you healed, when it no longer affects you. But that does, now let me correct something. When it no longer affects you, but that does not mean, that does not mean you allow people to try to recreate that, that trauma. And what do I mean? People, sometimes when we are in our singleness and people know our pitfalls, they know our flaws, they know that we don't like people that don't pay bills. They know we don't we don't like people that um, go to dinner and turn their phone over. We know that we don't like people um, staying in our house because we don't walk. They was in our house doing God knows what. We know we don't like people uh, when they say um, my cars broke down. We're talking about trauma here. My car's broke down. Can I use yours? And they riding around town with somebody else in your car. We're talking about real trauma here. Um, we, 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 you come home and find somebody in your bed, or we could even go before that, or you dealing with stuff from your childhood that you've experienced at a young age with an aunt, an uncle. Um, I know, now I can say this, I know I have friends I have friends uh, from middle school and high school that have slept with people's parents while they were in uh, middle school and high school, their friends' parents, and it has caused the trauma because it, uh, it caused them to grow up prematurely, but it also caused them to desire a certain thing. And why is that a trauma? That is a trauma because if they like somebody, if you don't exhibit this, I can't, I can't respond to you. So the healing, the healing that has to come forth, you have to get to the place that you learn how to get over that so that you can respond. Some of us are in such a trauma and we think it's just our outward reality. But what it is, is your inability to connect to another. You wonder why you can't commit. You wonder why you can't find a spouse. You wonder why you have a problem with talking to. This generation has an issue with uh, somebody saying, oh, you know, back in the day, you could say, oh, you're handsome, oh, you're beautiful. Can we go out to eat? Can we do this? You can't do that now with, oh, I got a man or, oh, I this. You can't even compliment somebody. Why? Because somewhere there was a trauma that doesn't allow them to react because there's something that happened that they're like, I'm not going through that again. So the moment that that stops affecting you, the moment that that stops replaying in your mind, the moment that you can effectively do it and be OK with it. And when I say be OK, I'm not talking about you go home and you reminisce, because a lot of us, especially men, when we are in trauma, you may not see it on the outside until we explode. But when we go to that bedroom, when we go to that shower, when we outside in the car where we don't want to be bothered with y'all, it's replaying, it's replaying, it's replaying because it's something in us that said we could have handled this better. We could have did this better. And it's also a place of self-blame. So one of the key things to start is some of us have to learn to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we made, for what we didn't see, for what we didn't know, for that thing uh, that we felt 
I feel my Holy Ghost. That that thing that you felt that you you were so anointed and you were so prophetic and you had eyes to see, but you missed it. Come on here. That thing that you 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 uh, God speaks to you, but God didn't speak to you concerning this, or even some of you that have experienced things at a young age, and you say, "Well, God, if this is you, why did you allow me to experience this? Because now I can't I can't move." Or let me use a better term. I can't adjust. Okay, I can't go with what everybody's saying. Okay, I didn't know don't know what happened. So in that, so in that, you know, it 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 causes things, but once you're healed, you'll know. But when you know it's time to heal is when you get sick and tired. And I have to say that because some of us, we have it, but we're not ready to let it go. I've known people for at least 15 years and for the 13 of that 15 years, they have been dealing with the same thing because they refuse to let it go. And they might not like it, but it's become so accustomed to them. It's become who they are. So they don't know how to operate outside of the trauma. They don't know how to operate outside of that. And they hold on because when you get sick and tired of going through something time after time, when you get sick and tired of failed relationships, when you get sick and tired of pe feeling like a piece of meat, when you get sick and tired of feeling less than what you're vile, when you get sick and tired of somebody always using you for finances or to build and elevate them. And then once you elevate them, they leave you. This goes for men and women because men deal with it too. They people just don't hear about it. When you get sick and tired of people taking your value and leaving your bank account empty, what am I saying? Your bank account, what you carry, what you bring to the table. So now when you go to find somebody else or find somebody that you're actually grafted to or the person that is actually called to, you don't have nothing for them to give. All right. I passed the mic. <laughs> I think for me, when it when I knew it was time for me to heal was when um, I kept dating the same person with a different face. And what that meant to me was I'm accepting the same behavior from everybody I come across. And that's when I knew it's time for me to deal with my trauma. You know, and dig deep within that because why am I still? I'm the same habits, the same behaviors, the same this, the same that, but a whole different face. And when I look back, I'm like, dang, why do I keep attracting this? Because that's who you are. That you attract who you are, not what you really desire. And so I've learned that. And so once I figured that out, that's why I made the choice to say, okay, put pause on dating right now. Because until I can deal with my trauma and stop attracting the same person, different faces, I'm never going to heal if I don't stop this rat race. And so, you know, that's when I knew it was time for me to heal, for me to dig deep within myself, to become self-aware of my habits, my thoughts, my behaviors. Um, and so with that, you know, I'm learning who I am all over again after the trauma, you know? And if we don't take that time to stop, we don't take that time to self-love, we don't take that time to pour back in ourselves, we continue to pour into these people who are not pouring into us, like you said, Apostle, who's taking and leaving us bankrupt and like, dang, here I am again, all over again. And the next person come along and you bankrupt again. You, When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being bankrupt, you'll stop. And that's what I was. I was like, you know what? No more. I'm getting older. I'm so over this, you know? And so once I figured out that I am enough, I deserve it. I need more. I need to pour more into me before I can pour out to somebody else. I don't have nothing else to pour, you know? And so let me just stop. Let me just make that choice for myself to stop. And when I say I stop, I absolutely stop. And I can honestly say this was the best choice I've ever made in my entire life to just stop, put a pause on it, regroup, reset, and then move forward eventually when it's time for me to do that. But right now, I am loving me. <laughs> I have reset. I am really getting a different perspective on life because I made that choice to say I'm enough. I deserve it. Let me just put it into me instead of pouring out to other people who don't even deserve it, who don't want it, who can't honor it, who can't support it, who can't whatever, but I can't because it's me. And that's when I knew it was time for me to say enough is enough and start to heal. I guess we're going to leave it there. Thank you, Jesus. That, that was really good. Listen, we, some of us need some, some deliverance. 
we need to sit down and shut up and be healed before we even go out there looking for a partner because we come in with our traumas and we'll we'll hurt somebody because we're still we're walking around and hurt putting on a mask as her business called taking off the mask we're walking around with a mask on and we're really pouring out all our pain and we're trying to connect and date but you ain't healed from your last hurt you ain't healed from your past trauma come on uh elder uh, elder Kobe. I think one thing that is very vital, um, and I'm currently doing this now. I think, and I hope, I hope y'all don't throw shoe at me. I mean, I won't get hit anyway because we're on the zone, so you know, I'll be okay. But I think everybody have to get out of relationship. I think everybody, everyone should go to counseling. Um, I can I currently do that now, um, for numerous of things, and I think counseling in the black church, and I think Prophet has just graduated with her counseling degree. Um, I think we, I think we did, if I'm not mistaken. Counseling is important to black and white people, to all people, because it is not fair to the next person what happened in your last relationship. And I think what happens is people bring trash, and you know, like Apostle was saying, and Apostle Washington was saying, you know, we bring that over, you know. They didn't park the car right. That's how Johnny parked it, and you know, you told him not to park, and you know, all of those things trigger, and it's not my fault. So then we got to we got to deal with um, the last husband. He cheated on you. He was gay, and then you trying to make sure that I ain't gay. So oh yeah, we going there. And so you trying to figure I ain't gay. You know I didn't let the toilet seat down the way he did it, and it, he left some right. You know it's just all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's not fair to the next person. Vice versa. So I think counseling and um, us Christians, we don't like to talk about that. Counseling is so important because those people have a knowledge and the wisdom to help you through different things. But we have to be the ones to take the knowledge and take the wisdom from them. I'm not saying go to no psychic. I'm not saying anything because I don't believe in that. That's all that's demonic. But at some point before you move to a relationship, you need to see a therapist or a counselor. That way, somebody can show you yourself and they can say, hey, you can have a different view. Because let's just be honest, our friends, they're not going to tell us the real truth about all this all the time. You know, they're going to be saying, child, you find it ain't true. It was Johnny. You know, it was Johnny. It was Leroy and Vincent and Thomas. It was all of them. But a therapist, a certified therapist will tell you, hey, this is what you need to work on. You don't know how to manage money. You know, you don't know how to do this. Because when we don't do that, and I've seen this many times, like Apostle said, you could bring that trash over to the next one vice versa, and it's not that person's fault. And they looking like, what happened? And then when you find out really what happened with the last relationship, you think to yourself, well, God darn it, if I would've knew this, I would've never pursued it. Cause this girl, this boy, it's crazy. But I think if those things are discussed from a standpoint, from a mature standpoint, before you date somebody, you can evaluate yourself and don't take those things over to that, I would say even, and I've never been married, but even when people are divorced, before you get married to somebody else, you need to take yourself on a counseling trip. That way you won't take those things over to the next match because that person might not could even be doing nothing, you know, but just like a process of that thing, reminded them of Johnny. And then they treat you how Johnny did. Then you trying to figure out how to smooth it over and it's just a bit confusing. So I think therapy it's great for everybody. That way you can get to find yourself and you'll know what you need to work on. Because sometimes we think we don't need nothing to work on. Everybody got something they can work on to be better. Every, I mean, everybody. You know, whether it's attitude, money management, how you talk to somebody, you know, everybody has something they can work on to be better. So I think that is important as believers and Christians in Christ. Therapy is very needed. And a lot of people don't stress that. You t- people be saying you can talk to Jesus, won't tell nobody. Yeah, that's fine, but I need somebody. To, I need to. T- I need somebody to talk back to me, that I can tell them everything. Yeah, I hate. I hate Apostle Burley. I hate him. He know I hate him. I need to be able to tell somebody that because you can't talk. And Apostle, I'm just using for example. I don't hate you, Apostle. I love you. You know, brotherhood. But you have to be able to talk to somebody about those problems because if you don't, that stuff will get in your heart and in your spirit, and then when it come out, you have a big mess. And you can't take back stuff that you say. You can't take it back. 
You know, people forgive you, but y'all know it's as black folks. We hold on to stuff. We're going to hold on to it. We're going to hold on to it. Yeah, I believe you, but I never trust that nigga again. You know it's going to be the back of my mind. I never trust. That's just culture. So that's my take on that. Okay, y'all, I'm looking at the time and I'm trying to push through these questions. We got a lot of questions. Um, so we're, we're running short on time. I know I said the two o'clock. I don't want to hold people longer than I should because we got another conference right at four. But some of the questions that I know I need to hear is how do you adjust the singleness after a divorce? Because you've been, for some people, that's a hard, hard transition when you've been attached and connected and you've, you've been one with somebody and now you're now no longer attached and you're now walking out single again from a divorce. Um, or or loss of a spouse. How do you adjust back to being single after a divorce? Anybody want to take that one? We're gonna keep going. I can I can take that one. Um, I have been married, and I think again, um, just being patient with yourself, um, just um, taking the time that you need to again heal. Um, taking the time to get over one, what caused the divorce, you know, processing that out to be able to get that out of your system. Because again, if you don't, if you just move on so quickly, you're going to bleed on the next person who didn't cut you. And so again, I really, um, I really believe patience is so important in that season. Um, and just giving yourself grace, definitely. Okay, so one of the things that it came out for me because I've been divorced not once, not twice, three times. Uh, forgiveness and taking accountability because the divorce is two people. And yes, it, it, somebody may have cheated. Somebody may have been lacking the, 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 the wrong gender, all that good stuff. But <laughs> they may have been potentially gay. But you still have to walk in a level of forgiveness as well because there's some things that you may not have done or may not have seen or ran through. And you have to forgive yourself as well in the process and take take accountability and responsibility for your part in it. But sometimes we always wanna point the finger, but we never look in the mirror and look at us. Um, get, forgive yourself and don't take ownership of things that don't belong to you. Because oftentimes we feel if we have to go through a divorce, we fail and we'll take ownership of we are now a failure. And we'll, some of that you really don't own. Some of it was trauma and the, the marriage just could not come together. Um, a lot of minds were, and I'm gonna be honest, uh, contracts. And because they were contract, we didn't come together in covenant. We came together because we was going to both benefit in some kind of way. I get to keep my kids because I was in the army. He got to get money. But then somewhere down the line, I figured, well, since I'm married, I got to follow the regulations of the military. I got to try and make it work. But that was never a part of the coming together in the first place. So when they're out there doing whatever they was doing, sleeping with whoever, I'm going to have to get mad. We, won we didn't come together for covenant. We came together for benefits. And so I had to walk out some of that hurt because nobody gets married. Literally, you don't get married to fit. And so when you have to find yourself back into a state of singleness and have children, you're trying to find balance in finding yourself again, whether the marriage was contract or not, or whether it was for benefit or not, you still have to find your balance of being alone again, dating yourself, figuring out who you are without the marriage. Because sometimes we'll put our identities in the relationship and I'm dating so-and-so. Well, I don't want to date your anointing. I don't want to date your mantle. I don't want to date your call. I want to date the person. Now, if you're just dating to get married because you want to marry a pastor, be careful because what, what you're asking for. Because sometimes people do date to find people who have titles. And I don't think you realize the cost of what you're asking for. So if you're out here looking for an apostle, you're out here looking for a pastor, or you're looking for a preacher, because pastors preach the same thing. But if you're looking for somebody with a title, understand what comes with that because he's not really necessarily going to belong to you if he don't know how to take off the title if he don't know how to take off the function and the role when he gets home now you're married to the pastor you're not married to the man and if you're trying to date a pastor he still don't belong to you he belongs to god first and then he got to cut he got to make sure his sheep are covered so you may not even be a priority to him especially if you ain't talking about getting married so be careful about um dating people who have not walked their process and don't get connected to people for their anointing, for the grace on their life. We often want to connect to stuff that, that ain't the person. That's a function. It is a mantle, but that's not the person. You got to learn how to lay down the role and lay down the function to get to the person. 
We're going to talk about that in the marriage side. I'm going to leave that alone over me. It's that. But coming out of divorce, I understand there's a disconnect that has happened. And if you had a long marriage, you need even more time to process it. Don't just jump up and try and get up. And I'm going to say this clearly as I'm hearing it. Don't jump out of one thing and try and get up under something else just to make your flesh feel good. They addressed it earlier, but I'm just going to go and say it. Don't jump out of one relationship and then jump under somebody else just to make your flesh feel good. Because when you wake up in the morning, you're like, why I did that? Because it made you feel good for the moment. It made you forget for the moment. But you still got to go through the process of healing. You still got to shed them layers off of where you have been. You still got to shed the layers off of the covenant you have come out of. Whether it was your failure or their failure or y'all failure together to connect, you still need to shed the layers of that thing. So don't jump from relationship to relationship and then you wonder why you got the same thing because you never healed from the first one. You never healed from your childhood wounds or when your daddy went there. Because little mm -hmm. girls, whether y'all believe it or not, if you had an absent daddy, you're going to look for a man who kind of got the same traits of ne never being there. Somebody who can't commit because your daddy didn't commit. Well, if your daddy was around, but your daddy didn't spend time, you're going to keep getting in a relationship with men who are physically there, but don't know how to spend time. So you got to learn how, who you are individually as a person before you start connecting with other people. I'm waiting on my apostle because like she, she got something to say and she, she over there, but she ain't clicking in. I'm waiting on her. I see that fire. So... Pastor Monty was tapping in just now. It's a, it's a place of transition. Like, you experience a loss. And I think people try to say, oh, because you lost a person, um, it's different. In, it's still a, a loss, right? Right? It's still a loss. It may be some, somebody said, mm -mm, there ain't no loss. I understand. But <laughs> you still become somebody different because you have to identify who this person is now as a single person. I definitely recommend counseling. Hello. I definitely, uh, definitely recommend deliverance because at the end of the day, whether that be a contract or covenant, it was still, guess what? A two-party decision, mm. right? He did this, he did that, but you say yes. He, he was doing this and this and this and that, but you said yes. You said yes to everything. So you have to take accountability to that yes, right? And you have to take accountability to that separation. And you have to take accountability into a new place. So it's a transition. I definitely recommend counseling. I have been divorced. I definitely recommend counseling. I definitely recommend deliverance. Because if you do not go through deliverance, yes, professional counseling is needed. But if you do not go through deliverance, guess what? You're going to take that same thing, right? Counseling makes awareness and it causes you to face some things. But deliverance is just like breaking a soul tie. You want to take that ex. You don't want to take him into the next. Hello? You don't, you don't want to take him into that next, right? And a lot of time when we are grieving divorce and different things like that, we are numb to things that are going on around us. And sometimes we tolerate things that shouldn't be tolerated. Can I be honest? We tolerate a lot of things that should not be tolerated at any point in given time. And so with deliverance, it brings an awakening of what you're not going to tolerate no more. Like Apostle Minor said, you can you can be uh, you're going through the healing process of, of, of going through something. You take on that that ownership of it. And he doesn't like nobody yelling at him. Right. So it becomes a trigger. Right. But it doesn't bother him like that. But it doesn't mean that he's going to tolerate it any longer. Right. Don't, you can't get the two twisted acknowledging and accepting and moving forward and healing from it does not mean that you tolerate it because you're healed from it. No, you just know your boundary and what you're not going to accept. Hello? A lot of us don't want to accept the boundaries that we know need to be in place, and that's the problem, whether it be divorced, married, single. We have to create healthy boundaries and acknowledge those things, and sometimes that does take counseling, professional counseling. There's nothing wrong with it, but it also takes accountability and deliverance so what's in you can come out. You can't keep pointing fingers. What's in you has to come out. What's in us has to come out regardless. Now, if you still tolerate it after you go through deliverance, then guess what? That's that's on you. That's like Apostle said, that's, that's you adjusting to settling in Jesus' name. Okay, I have one uh, that was sent anonymously. 
what if a person is is going through a divorce that was married to the same sex? So here it is. They have they've come to Christ, turned their lives around, ready to walk out. Everything that God has for them really want to be married to a man who was married to what? Well, is going through currently going through a divorce with the same sex, um, and because now they know what's right. But how do they deal with the warfare that's so difficult? And they already went to their leaders. How do they deal with the difficulty of the warfare and the divorce from the same sex? So they've already went to their leaders and there's still no resolve. Then it's time to shift, right? Because at the end of the day, somebody uh, said something to me the other day, which, which you know, sometimes it sounds like a cliche. Um, if you're not in place, somebody is always replaceable. And a lot of times we keep ourselves bound to situations because we think that people can't do it without us, right? And I, I'm just speaking personally. If I'm coming out of something and the very thing that I'm trying to come out of, I'm experiencing warfare in that area, in that environment, I'm going to remove myself from that environment. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's whether it be family. Let's, let's, get, let's get, make it tough. Whether it be family, mama, daddy, oh, you have a circle of friends. Like, let's be honest, because if you were same sex, then at some point you 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 gather friends or associates that you have created around that huddle to agree to that movement. We have to remove ourselves, and it's a process, just like anything else. You know, I I know sometimes we we try to gun ho on homosexuality and things like that, but sin is sin. It's the same thing. If you create something in agreement, right? We we have a foundation of what we agreed on, and then we create a huddle to support. It. You got to break that huddle and mm. it, it may start with you. You have to remove yourself out of that equation and it's okay for a time. You know, some, sometimes it's so hard to be by myself, but guess what? If you remove yourself from that situation and you are praying and you're asking God to send you divine connections, he will do such that. But if I'm somewhere where I'm not being supported in my decision that I know is right in my shanana with God, I'm going to remove myself. And he shall replace what I need. Just like they can replace you with that type of offering. Hello. They can replace you of being sitting in that pew in your sin. Guess what? Life goes on. You have to be able to stand for something or fall for anything. And so I feel like whoever that is, that circle has to be broken. Right? Because that circle created a bond and a cycle that will make you feel like you're sinning because you're letting go. We're not doing that. Hmm. Awesome, brother. I'm going to just type in for two seconds um, and also when you make a decision especially when you're in a situation you have to understand when you make a situation to come out because you know it's wrong everything when, you, when you're in the place of transition everything is going to tell you that you have made the wrong decision everything is going to tell you so that means even the person you were married to the friends y'all might have had in common because at the end of the day, they don't want you to be there and they believe if they can shift your mind, you can come back. But the fact that you know it's wrong, that you've heard the voice of the Lord, it's important that you move forward. Sometimes you just have to mount up and sometimes it requires, you know, grabbing a hold to somebody uh, that is encouraging to you or a leader or somebody that can really, you know, encourage you, change your circle. Because sometimes it literally takes for you to be uprooted out of a certain circle and implanted somewhere else. Because if we're not careful, you know, we'll find, and this is anybody with any type of given situation, you will find yourself back married. You will find yourself back in that type of relationship and you will find yourself back where the place that you know that God called you out of. So you have to understand and know that you know that you know that you heard the voice of the Lord and that he desires for you to be free and get everything that you, that you have for him because it's a stronghold and a stronghold is going to do fight you tooth and nail. So love on yourself and understand if they love you, they would still listen. Even when we have people around us that sin, do stupid stuff, do drugs, we don't agree with it, but we love them. And if they cannot reciprocate the whole, the same love that they say the quote unquote community is about, then you know that it wasn't God in the first place. 
You know, they, oh, we love, we love you regardless. Well, now because I don't agree with how you live in, and now because you can't be with me or because you're in the lifestyle, I feel like you betray me, but I love you. See, that's what we're talking about, that false love. It only loves you when you're at the same place that they are. It only loves you if you're with there is. And nine times out of people, I'm going to share this. A lot of times, most of the people in the lifestyle, there is already an inkling in the inside of them who know that God is. There's a young, another young man in another city, and we know nobody ever bashed him for his lifestyle or anything. We just loved on him, gave him the word. Do you know the people in the lifestyle told him, you don't need to go to that church? You don't need to do this because they begin to see a change, but they already knew what would happen, which is why they told them to stay from the from the church because they don't want change. So listen, I encourage you keep doing what you're doing. Find some people that can encourage you. It doesn't mean that you have anything uh, wrong with you, but God is doing something different for you to you in this season. He's doing something different. And when God does something different, some things of the old must die away. And this right here, where you're thinking it's something tragedy, it could be God doing a circumcision on all that extra stuff. I feel the Holy Ghost, all that extra stuff that was attached to you, because some things, because they are our plank, they are our our our, our noose, they are our uh, anchor. God has to do a complete cut. He has to do a complete cut, because if he doesn't, we're likely to be turned back over to the hands of Satan. So God has to do a complete surgery so that that thing is severed. And that is just a process that sometimes when we get so deep in a thing, God has to do. But let me tell you something. God is always in the business of creating new circles. He's always in the business of creating new companies. He's always in the business of creating something that edifies who you are in him. So you don't have anything to worry about. This process is here. And guess what? We are on here. We're praying for you. Listen, people go through things. And I tell people all the time, your sin might be di different from my sin. But guess what? We all have a struggle. We all have a struggle. And it doesn't mean that you're going to die in this, in this struggle. And I promise you, God is very happy with your decision. Amen. Okay, moving to the next question. I know that was that was a heavy one. It was heavy. It was heavy. Thank you, Jesus. And we we will be praying for the young lady um, who just happened to be walking by and listening. So, uh, the next question I have is for the men. Yeah, ready? Here we go. What attributes do men look for in a woman? Let me go first. Okay. When. I don't know if this is a good thing I should say or not, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay, so some of the attributes that men look in a woman, they like a woman that can be a woman, but she's not somebody that's stronger than a man. Meaning, I don't want to fight you every day. I don't, I don't want to be combative with you every day. I don't. First of all, if anybody knows me, I that is the quickest way to tear my nerves. I'm not talking about any other man, my nerves. That is the quickest way to get me to be turned off by you is you sitting there nagging and finding something to pick about instead of just talking, instead of just communicating. So we, 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 we you know, people say, people say, oh, men don't know how to communicate. In reality, men like people who, who, who like to communicate, but we don't want nobody that's trying to that's trying to uh, quote unquote rule us. We don't want nobody that that like lets us feel smaller. We don't we don't we don't want to uh, we don't want to submit to somebody that we feel like we in a boxing ring every time we have a conversation with you. They talk about be your peace. I can't be your peace if you be in my hell. I'm 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 just trying to. I'm trying to help somebody. So that's for me, for me, before the other things come in, that part is at the top of the list because that lets me know if I'm going to be, able, if we're going to be able to be friends, am I going to have not intimacy, but am I going to be intimate conversational wise? Are, are our minds going to be able to connect? You know, are we going to have something to talk about? Because you rah, 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 and I can't, under, I can't be the man to understand the mind of a woman because you always being like a lion you always roaring at somebody you always got something to say or you always have an issue 
Because here's another thing. We talked about mistakes. Are you a woman that can accept my mistakes when you expect me to accept yours so that we can grow? So that we can grow. So that's look, that's at the top of my list. Another thing, and I'm gonna share this, and somebody, somebody's, somebody is going to laugh at me, but I must share this because I get a lot of inboxes. Um, we don't like crazy women. We don't like crazy women. And me personally, and because this is a singles gathering, I'm gonna be transparent. Me, myself as a man, one thing I'm in God, I'm in God, I would like to stay in God, right? One reason I do, can't do crazy women, not that I can't handle it, but because my crazy is going to come in competition with your crazy. And now I'm going to be out of God. You you know, and, and because I realized this. Talk apostle or talk apostle. Because I realized this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't talk to you. And if, and anybody will tell you, because I have had inbox, if I sense you a stalker, if I smell you crazy, Mm -mm. because there is something on the inside of me that might wake up and I can be your cellmate. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -uh. So, therefore, so therefore, I can't, I can't do that. And when I see that, like they said, it's something that I can see that you have not dealt with. And rather than hurt your feelings, right, rather than hurt, hurt your feelings, I just say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Even though we know women don't like that. Oh, he think he better than somebody. No, because I see something that's going to put me out of God and it might put me into hell. I'm, I'm just being honest. We like smart women. We like we like women that are our peace. We like women. Well, uh, I can even say women who understands when a man is weak. When I say when a man is weak is Understanding when I have had enough. Understanding when the weight has just become too much. Because sometimes women, not, not blaming y'all, but sometimes we don't understand where the man is at his limit, but yet women keep expecting more. And they don't have you, you're you're requiring something that they can't give, and then you get upset. Because they get, get because they can't give it because you don't have the understanding that hey, but you understand if the man flips out. So so we want a woman that understands. Not saying we got to run over women because I don't want no woman I can run over that that tears my nerves. I, I don't want that. I, I I don't want that. I don't want no woman that I can run over because if I can run over that means you are a robot. I want somebody with a personality. I want somebody that loves God as much as I, I do, meaning I can have a godly conversation and I can have a natural conversation, meaning you are. I'm going to say it, meaning you're my peace. If I'm doing ministry, you're my peace and not my hell, meaning I can be in God and do what I'm supposed to do. And I don't have to worry about your jealousy showing up, choking people, talking about you laying hands on such and such because uh, Prophet High says something. If you know that you're, the mate that you desire or that you have your eyes on is anointed and you know as a woman that you're trying to catch our attention, why would you let that come out? You can't be talking to other women. You're doing this. So see, now you're stopping who I am in God. Now you're stopping my assignment. And you stopping my assignment before I even think about I do. Got to go. That that for me, if if you know me, if you're gonna stop my assignment and not add to it, not saying that you will not be taken care of, but if you become a hindrance, if you come into a place where we have, and I have, have had this happen, um, when you come to a place of, you know, we have a disagreement, so you all of a sudden want to attack my ministry because you know of where I am in God, you are not the wife, you are the bi. I'm gonna take you are not the wife, and you got to go with the quickness. Okay, I'm yielding. Next. Elder Jermaine, this was for the man. Apostle didn't say it so much. My, I mean, I can't even think straight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, everything he said, he was on the money. I think now I'm gonna take it to the other side. Oh, uh, okay, I can come back. Most most women, most men want a woman that's pretty, nice looking, smell good. But it's a lot of us men. Okay, a lot of us men don't like all this new stuff that women are doing now. All these eyelashes touching your nose, 
you know, all this unnecessary stuff weave all over the place. Um, it's just, you know, it, it, it has gotten out of control. You know, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's third degree murder. You know, you meet somebody, they, they look good and the next day you don't see them with their wig off and, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, know, you don't know what you're expecting. Hold on one second. You don't know what you're expecting. So I think, I know for me, uh, my prayer is I want to find somebody that's nice, beautiful, in and out, you know, with makeup, without makeup, you know, somebody classy. That way you can know, Apostle Brother, I'm not telling you where I am. That way you can, you know, know what you're looking for. Because when you get married and you're looking for a mate, you're going to have to wake up to this person forever. So you want to make sure you find somebody that's caring, smell good. I know for me, I like a smell good, smell good woman. Somebody that's always dressed nice. You know, not always dressed up, but you know, you want to be happy your mate. You know, when you see them in public, you want to say, hey man, that's my woman. You know, that's my wife or that's my friend. You don't want to be saying, well, I don't know who that is. I don't, I don't know what she got on. You know, you don't want that to ever be the case because I've seen situations like that where you'd be like, that's your wife. You'd be like, yeah, man, you know. I'd be like, do you see what she got on? You know, and some people are proud of that. Honestly, a real talk. Some people are proud of that. But um, in today's society, men, like I said, I, I can't speak of everybody, but I'm pretty sure a possible agree. But you want to find a nice woman. You know, you want a nice looking woman. You know, that, that goes a lot. People be talking about, you know, it really ain't about that. For me, it is. You know, I want somebody, I want to wake up to somebody that look nice. You know, sometimes, but at the same time, like a pastor said, we don't want nobody crazy. You know, you have to be, you know, aware of that as well. So I think it's a balance, you know, you just want to find a person that meets you because everybody likes different stuff. So that's my take on it. I got a question for you, you gentlemen, if you don't mind, Apostle Hunt. I mean, Prophet Design, if you don't, if you don't mind. Why is it not, and I'm not going to say it's not easy because, of course, I'm not a man. Why is it... Uh, kind of unheard of or is it okay for you guys to say I can't I can't uh, meet that requirement right um, Apostle Monty was saying something about um, women will ask for more and keep asking right but they don't have that to give why not be able to have that honest conversation to say I'm not able to give that right and then when you get into something, whether it be dating or, or marriage, you get into that and that false expectation is there because it was already set and not corrected or addressed. And then it'll come out as I'm not good enough. You know what I'm saying? You know, because, you know, women are nurturers. We want to be able to, you know, to, to assist in things. But my thing is, why is it hard for men to say, I'm not able to do that? This is what I can offer. All right, first, first things first, let me put a disclaimer. Yes, women are nurturers, but these 2,023 women, they are different breed. We're not gonna, we not gonna go there. We, we Talk get possible. that the women arise and Talk come back. I'm just saying, just like y'all say possible. about the men, they not like they used to, the women either. Okay, but when it comes to that, I I really do believe a lot of that is the ability to be vulnerable, be, and it's a trust. Re regardless of how we look at it, it's a trust. It's a trust factor because at that time, everybody is different. But at that time, I might not feel I can have that type of conversation with you. And sometimes I'm gonna throw this out there. Sometimes it can be as simple because we had a disagreement about four months ago, and about four months ago you use something that I told you against me. So now I can't have that conversation. Oh, awesome. Or because you found out something from my past, from talking to family or, or something, and now you didn't use that against me. I can't trust you with my vulnerability. So I can't have that conversation because I don't know if when I'm in my pit, are you going to use that to stump me even further than where I am? And I just, I can't take that at that moment. See, because a lot of times when men can't take it, it's, it's different because you're not going to know. It's just going to go bad. You're not going to know because it's just going to go bad and go bad quickly. And every decision they make from that point is going to be bad. But I do agree that we as men need to 
have that conversation. But when the trust is not there, it's very difficult. Or when the trust has been broken or mishandled, it's really, it's a difficult, it can come back through God restoring it, but it's very hard to restore once it's before somebody that's supposed to be your helpmate. Remember, there's a difference between 2023 women and the women from back there. All right. Amen. Apostle, Apostle, just to co-sign what you said, you're absolutely right because most men don't open up from the beginning. You know, it's almost like, you know, what they know is almost going to be like a locker room. They're not going to say anything. And as soon as that woman uses that against them, you can forget it. It's like, it's like those guys, I'll use myself. That happened to me before. And I told myself, I said, I'm going to fix that. I just won't deal with that. I'm not telling her nothing. That's fine. I'm going to deal with her. She, she's going to learn today. And that stayed with me for a while because it's like, you can't use what I tell you against me because you're supposed to be a safe place. I don't care if we fall out. I don't care because, and I can just be perfectly honest. Apostle, I need you to bat me. And Elder Hines, I need you to bat me. Y'all women know y'all will go there sometimes. Y'all, I mean, it, it just come, you, you know what? You Then that man be steaming, blowing hot, and then you try to fix him. And you know, as men, we don't take, we don't adjust well. You know, we, we, we stay mad. We're going to be mad. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of those things I think um, that I think even on both sides, men and women, you have to be careful. You don't say something that a man tell you and a woman, vice versa, because they're trusting you in that safe place. And even if you are mad, it's still not supposed to come up because it's almost like that could become a go-to. And then once they find out you feel that way, shut down mode. So that's my take on that. Forgive me, I know we're a little bit over time, but I know there's another male on here, uh, the husband of, of Apostle Modro. Eric, do you have an answer? Or is he working? He may not be able to answer. He's at work, but he probably got a corner or something he can go in. No, don't do him like that. Don't, 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 don't. Mm -mm. He can't He can't answer right now. He married. <laughs> hey, a man. He's still a man. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, at some point in time, because this is his first marriage, so I mean, at some point in time, I'm pretty sure he he has an opinion on things, whatever like that. Because it definitely, I think this definitely needs to be a table talk, and especially for apostles and prophets. Not not saying everybody else ain't important, right? But apostle, prophets, and pastors, because we have to understand um, what a spouse is supposed to be, right? Even if you are engaged, if you are engaged in something, maybe need to be a table talk so we can understand what safe uh, places look like. You know, Amen. this is a, a real thing um, that we deal with. And so we won't have false expectations because a lot of times people look at marriages and they, they create these false expectations that weren't even in place because, but you saw so-and-so do it. So you felt like, oh, it has to go that way. But your relationship is not always going to be like somebody else's. And that's sometimes that's the problem of the identification of a relationship. Mr. Keisha, you have anything? I think the question was, if I'm not mistaken, what a man wants in a woman. Um, I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll move on because now we're on the women then because we want to get the men. It's two single men on here because the other two are married. Amen. Oh. Okay. I uh, women, what are you looking for? A partner that we can give some tools to other women on here because I don't uh, tell you now, my, my comment is don't ask for something you can't even give. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't ask for something you can't give. Yeah. If you I, know you got a mouth that runs about everything, don't ask for a man who can hold a secret because you can't hold them. <laughs> That's my two cents. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. So for me, um, at this stage of my life, I really, really look for uh, or desire um, vulnerability. That's big with me now. For someone to connect with me at their lower of lows. Someone to be, um, I can be their safe space and they can be my safe space where we can cry together, laugh together, um, whatever we can do it together um, and, and not feel the shame or the guilt or the embarrassment or anything of that sort. Um, uh, like you said, 2023 women. <laughs> um, I think we sometimes get that stigma because we've been pushed in that position that we have to do it by ourselves or we have to do it you know because they're not available or to that extent but I think for me at this stage of my life I really look for someone who can really take their mask off and be their genuine self when it comes to their 
their special person, you know, and not put that persona on um, just to get me. And I think um, a lot of men and women do that. Um, but for me, again, I'm big on choices in my life and I choose to allow myself to be vulnerable. Um, I choose to allow myself to um, be open in the sense of allowing someone to come in, because if I don't, how would I ever know? And being, and, and then when I am in that space, knowing God is not going to let me fail, you know, even though emotionally I may say, oh, I did it again. But if God tells me to do it this way I know he has my back you know and so if I do do it um with the wrong person I know I'll bounce back faster than I did before so for me I think in this stage I, vulnerability um and security is huge with me um especially in the person that's supposed to be in my safe space um, outside of God I, that's huge with me and so yeah the money is good the looks are good the biceps and all that is good <laughs> but when you take all that away what substance do you have outside of that and that's why I say vulnerability and safe space and security is huge with me at this stage of my life and that's what I look for in a man Eric are you available now I know he said, give him a second. I want to give him the opportunity, Minister Eric, to um, give his input. Because anytime we can get, as women, we can get insight from men, whether they're married or single, it's to our benefit. Um, even my husband can tell you, like he said, when I tried to talk to him, he was like, I ain't ready. He was up front. I ain't looking for nothing right now. He gave me that woman line. Oh, now we say me and Jesus alone. <laughs> That's what he gave me. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I was turned down for the first time in my life. Wait a minute. But he did it so sweet. And I called everybody, hey, I was turned down for the first time in my life, but he did it so sweet. And they was like, did he really turn you down? I was like, well, in my eyes, he did. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> in my eyes, he did turn me down. But he let me know he wasn't ready. And sometimes we as women want to blow right past that even when they're telling you. So even if you're with somebody, you're trying to partner with somebody, he say, I'm not ready for a relationship, trust them at their word because we as women will paint our own narrative and not listen to what the man has said. If he told you he ain't ready for no relationship, he ain't ready for no relationship, he just wants somebody he can play around with, you might need to pass on him and go on about your business because he'll treat you as if you were in a relationship and you be in a relationship by yourself while he digging and flannering around with other people. Uh, I don't know if y'all want to continue on. I'm trying to wait on Sir Eric to come on and give us the answer. I have plenty more questions, but let's I'm going to add to that. Go ahead, I'm going to add to that. Um, it goes back to what Apostle Burley was saying about, you know, you being questioned as a man. Is there something wrong with you? You know, uh, what's going on with you? There's nothing going on with you. Men, I think it's 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 good that you take the time to to find yourself. You know, sometimes God shows us our ugly self in the mirror and we don't like it. So going into relationships, that's the same thing. You don't want to make the same mistakes that you made in the past because you see the mistakes you made. And anytime you have time to yourself, those things that you did or didn't do are brought back up to you. And so even with that, those things were brought back up to me. Hey, I could have done this better. Hey, I could have done that better. Hey, you shouldn't have done this. Hey, you shouldn't have done that. You could have done this. You could have done that. So all of that plays into your mind when you really, really want to get it right. You know, when you really, really want to get it right, not just jump into another relationship, but when you really, really want to get it right, taking your time, making sure that you're good, making sure that your, your wellness is good. You know, even now we just talked about mental health and I know I'm switching a little bit, but I didn't learn a whole lot about mental health just over the last couple of years, I started started learning more about mental health and mental awareness. I wish I had known this years ago that we do need to seek counseling. You know, we do need to uh, have those see uh, seek counseling, have those counseling sessions. Seek someone who knows a little bit more about it instead of you know what we're always hearing in the ministry. Oh, just pray about it; it'll get better. Just pray about it. Well, prayers that's good. It's good to pray, but also we got to be making the steps towards making ourselves or getting better. 
And so that requires us talking to someone who has more knowledge about the subject than we do, someone who has more practice, someone who, who, who has dealt with many, many occasions or many, many uh, instances where people have these issues. It's good to do those things. And again, I know I got off the subject, but I just want to address a couple of things. I know I've been a little quiet, but I'm enjoying this. So that's all I got to say. Just two things. Just two things. Um, number one, be careful what you ask for. All single women and men, be careful what you ask for. A lot of times we say that we are ready for things or we are asking for things that we cannot handle, right? And it creates a false expectation, right? Meaning you ask for something, but then when you get it, you find out it's more than you can handle, right? I'm not talking about in a bad way. I'm talking about compatibility. I'm talking about being equally yoked, things that, and then you have to ask God to adjust you or to uh, transform you to meet, match what that person needs. So be careful what you ask for. A lot of times we have false expectations because what we see other people do, I can do it too. But that's not true. We 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 you know we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us. But even in that, it goes deeper. You know, with that statement. So just be careful about what you ask for and stop creating false expectations of things. You know, a lot of times we ask for stuff and we really cannot handle it. We really can't handle those people, though, especially with leaders. Hello. Especially with leaders. Um, because you see the anointing, because you see those things, like Prophet of Science was saying, because you see those things, it draws automatically. Let's let's be real. The anointing draws, right? But it does not mean that you can handle that person behind the scene. It does not mean that. And so you have to take those things in prayer. Why why do you want to be a preacher's wife? Hmm? It, it's more to it than just being a first lady. You why do you want to be these things? Why Why do you want to date a pastor? Why do you want to date an apostle? Why do you want to date a lady apostle, right? It, it's been a, a lot of things where I've seen female apostles being put to shame, right? Meaning they, they got set up in, in a vulnerable place, right? Uh, uh, and I'm not bashing men. I'm just saying, because at the end of the day, guess what? We had to make that decision, right? I, I'm saying we, as far as women, have to make a decision to accept and say yes, Right. So in your singleness, make sure that you are prepared what you're asking God for. And some of us have this fake list. Uh, Pastor Monty was saying we got um, we have lists and things. But some of some of y'all lists be, you know, what I'm saying the Holy Spirit was talking to me like some of y'all lists is outrageous right now. Right. I don't know what the 2023 20, women are doing right now. 2023 men are doing right now. But go back over your list, because if you're not bringing that to the table, go change your list. That's for each and every one of y'all on here that's single. If you're not matching or can't match or not capable of matching everything that you have on this list now, go back and change your list. Right? Go back and change your list. You want this man to have A1 credit. Do you have A1 credit? You, you want this man to do this and this and that. Are you doing this and this and that? You want him to be able to communicate. Can you communicate? You want him to handle your gangster. This, I'm just saying, let's be real. Let's be real. False expectations. We look at too many movies, too many um series, love and hip hop. We look at all these things and that's how I want my man to be. Girl, look how they kissing and stuff. I can't wait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It goes deeper than that. It really goes deeper than that. So just make sure that you are not creating false expectation of what you think love is. Love is action, first of all, not just words. A man can tell you stuff all day long. A woman can uh, tell you things, all I mean, all kind of sweet nothings, but can't produce anything, right? So let's make sure that our words are matching what we are saying in action, right? You'll find that you you have less stress. You won't be having gray hairs and all this stuff as a single person. If you take it at face value and spiritually on what the Lord is telling you, amen? Okay, I don't know if everybody has to go right now, but I was trying to give the audience a chance to ask any questions they may have had. I apologize for going a little bit longer. Are there any questions for Apostle Simona, Apostle Burley, or Elder Jermaine Coleman? I know what he's getting ready to get off because they were supposed to be off at too. 
Um, but if y'all have any questions, now's the time to ask. If not, we're going to close in prayer. Oh, Mr. Jermaine left. <laughs> so y'all have any questions for Apostle Simona? Uh, Lakeisha trying to come back in. Y'all have any questions for Apostle Simona or Apostle Burley or Miss Washington? If there are no questions, we're going to ask Apostle Burley to pray us out. I ain't seen no questions. I ain't seen no hands. Hey Amen. No questions. I hope we didn't just say a lot and y'all y'all just don't want because y'all scared or y'all don't want to get called out. We people too. When 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 we go to our houses, we people too. We take we take the 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 mantle off and rest in our humanness. We deal with things just like you guys. We we go through life like you guys. It's okay. I mean that's that's the problem. I think Apostle Sai said it earlier in the chat session that's the problem with us in the church is we don't want to have the needed conversations we would rather for people go out in the world to get it than to teach the people in the house of god mm -hmm. so with that being said since there are no questions all hearts and minds are clear heavenly father we thank you for everybody that joined in. We thank you for the vision, Father. We thank you. We thank you for singleness. We thank you for the ability to love ourselves, for the ability, Father, uh, to be perfected in your will, for Father, for you to get us straight. And Father, we thank you for the men and women, Father, that are expecting, that are looking, that are searching. Father, we decree and declare, Father, that that in who you have assigned to them, that rib, that rib cage, Father, that it will be illuminated to them. Father, in anything that is false, that is of imitation, that is of um, another caliber, something that you have not designed for them to get that may be coming or that is presence. Father, we ask even now that you send a wind to blow it away. Father, we thank you even now for their hearts. Father, that hearts may be mended. Father, that things may be renewed, that passions may be re renewed. Father, we even speak to the passion of wanting to have a spouse. And Father, for those that have decided that they no longer want it because of what they experienced. Father, we release a healing rain upon them now, Father, that they may be resuscitated in you, Father, for, for if you, it is your will, Father, that they may accept all that you have for them. Father, we cover each and every person, Father, even as they take these tools back and uh, use them in their own life, Father, that they may grow, that they may flourish as godly singles in kingdomship, Father, that they may continue to grow, continue to thrive, continue to move and not be stagnant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If y'all would do me a favor, if this has made any impact, if you can message me and leave a small, um, I would say synopsis of what you gain from it so that we we know whether we're making the right impact. Um, I thank God for the realness. I love the transparency of the apostles, my husband, Miss Washington and Elder, uh, Elder Coleman, who was on with us. Thank y'all for joining us this afternoon. When I tell you, anytime you get ready to do something for the kingdom, the warfare will come. My husband has a crack in his windshield about that long. Yes. Um, and he started leaking. Stuff just been happening all week long. And we was kind of just been laughing through it because it's like we know the enemy's coming. Anytime you do anything for God, the yes. enemy's will come to try. And we laugh. It's funny because we really laugh through it. it. We already know. When you're in kingdom and you're trying to do what God called you to do, you already know things are going to come. So you you try to Fair. take it. You take it as it comes, and um, I don't even call it war. I, I just call it the enemy. He he at play to try to frustrate your purpose, to try to frustrate what God is doing through you. So when you're asking for all this stuff, know that the enemy is going to come to try you, and and God will stand for you. Just stand in the peace of God, because it has been a test. It has been moments where I'm just like, I don't even think we should do this, but um, even with my health and things going on, we kept pushing forward anyway, and we transitioned to online because of health issues. And some other things that took place. But we're grateful for y'all who joined us. Thank you. You can leave a comment. Uh, you can leave it in the chat. You can leave it. Um, message me through Facebook. Or you can send a text message. Those of you who are in Becoming Her. You already know you still have access to come into the marriage conference. I know today is long. Because it's already two conferences in one day. But I appreciate you. I thank you for joining us. I pray you got what you needed. I pray you leave here changed, that you don't go out the same the way that you came in. Y'all have a blessed day, and thank you for joining us. Thank you.
Miss Lakeisha, Miss Washington, I need you to send me your cash app. Okay. <laughs>